your next show, Mashio no Oto. Oh, um, another banger. Oh, God, the feels, guys. If you didn't get the feels from this episode, you're dead to me. All right? I, dropped, I dropped the show. <laughs> oh, you're dead to me. Oh, there it is no. again. I don't, even know if, I don't even know if B-Stars can save this. You told B-Stars come back. Oh, my God, you're dead to me. I don't me. even know anymore. Man, that is, that is the statement. Oh, um, I can't. I can't. And welcome to the Anime Isaka Podcast, week three of the spring 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello! And finally, we have Justin. Hey, everyone. All right. Uh, let's get a couple of pieces of news before we head on to the main shows. Um, the big one, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train. Uh, just came out in theaters here in the U.S. We got estimated what, like twenty million throughout this weekend. So, yeah, so really, on Friday so... it was ranked number one, but then it got beat up by Mortal Kombat. Yeah, but I mean, but it, besides that, uh, so basically did better than the the past two uh, like Hero Academia movies for sure. Did better than Your Name, Weathering You, and then it's uh, it's outpacing um, Dragon Ball Z Broly. So, so uh, I know Broly it did thirty million. At domestic, so we'll see if uh, Demon Sarah gets to beat that. Because it's running for like, it? another week at least. I don't know how much okay, longer. Okay, doesn't yeah. ask you. Yeah, okay. I got a little bit longer. So how, how long did we run for? It. I don't remember. Sorry, just to yeah, that's a good question. At least I don't know two, either. I know I saw it in, in theaters, but yeah. I would think that's yeah, probably the norm with domestic releases from anime is a two week gotcha. period. I, I can. Rem- I just couldn't remember. I, I wasn't sure if there was like some sort of uh, special. Thing with Dragon Ball Super or Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, just because um, it is Dra- it's the Dragon yeah. Ball franchise. Well, the thing about uh, Moving Trains, it made more money because IMAX too. So there's also that to count for. IMAX was nice. <laughs> no, but and anyway, then, we had a whole podcast about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah we just did. So check out. it out. Yeah. Check yeah. it out. Um. So so uh, Pokemon still number one. It's at 85 million domestic. So <laughs> a long way for anything beats that here. I don't Next. think it's ever gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for uh, yeah, moving train, and then um, we got uh, so this is for me, restaurant in another world, season second season confirmed. So I'm a, I'm I'm excited. More food porn, always enjoy that. So Woo-woo. excited for that. And then a big one that was announced today because as it was uh, there was a 10th anniversary Madoka event going on, and they announced a uh, sequel theme, uh, sequel film to Rebellion. So. All you Monocle fans get hyped. Yeah. The fan theories can open up yet again of where we're going <laughs> to end <Which> up. <laughs> it's just, it's really weird because Rebellion, I thought it's supposed to be open ended. I didn't realize it's going to make a sequel and more content, which I, which itself I thought like, didn't know. the TV series it was like open ended too. So I didn't realize it's going to be a sequel to that. So, just so re- nah. this movie is all just... original then? Yeah. yeah. Because there's there's two okay. movies there's two movies that are compilation, and then the third one is the actual s- sequel, mm-hmm. and then nice. is, and then this announcement is a sequel to that movie. Gotcha. So, yeah, Sorry, I'm just I, I hyped that they got a uh, Urobuchi back for know, right? Directing stuff. The, the the butcher as they call Sh- him. Trent's so. favorite, as he, oh my God, as he knows terrible. him from from Fate Zero. <laughs> oh, is that, yeah. is that him? Yep, yes. that's the writer Fate Zero. Oh my yep. God. Okay. And he also did uh, Gargantia. So. Avoid him all at all costs. If you do not like Fate Zero, avoid this man. Yeah. It's gonna have right. some suffering for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Alright, so that's all the uh the news piece we uh, wrap up for. Let's head on to our first show. Uh let's talk about Megalobox. Or no man, yeah, Megalobox is... too. I always forget that. But right. Yeah. But I, I think we're we're pretty much done with uh the the immigrant family and their kind of uh, uh no. plot line. Which, so, I thought it was really good though. I mean, I, like, really overall, high. like yeah. this was definitely. I think I think it's probably my favorite of this arc of or whatever. Like for Mega Box, like it was just a nice wrap up and just just like basically like pulling well, everything we went through this season with like Joe like recovering and then like fishing off of Chief and then just having Joe 
uh, just recon- reconcile like his feelings about everything. And then now it seems like we're gonna go back to more Joe's backstory. So I just really, mm-hmm. I, I, I really love this episode. Did you guys like? Were you guys okay with like uh, how, how she died? Uh, I would agree with you. Where I felt like it was a little bit lackluster. I was, you know, admittedly thinking kind of that he would be shot or killed through other means by this kind of mafia group, the guy yeah. you know with the little dog that was trying to to rig all the fights and everything. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of glad that it didn't go that way in a sense, because you know last week I was saying like, hey, what probably is going to happen is you know Chief's <laughs> going to die, and then that's going to be some motivation for Joe to go do his thing and. Lo and behold, it didn't happen exactly the way that I said, so yeah. I definitely don't deserve profit title in any regards, but maybe <laughs> I'll just get the right, letter we'll get P. I'm on, I'm on the starting point. Um, but, he, but yeah, he, that was the part that I've kind of fell flat. I was just like, okay, I figured he was going to die. I, I they mean, harped on it so hard with like the hummingbird and stuff, even yeah. in like the promo art. He was he was untouched, though, by the fire that kind of bothered me as well. <laughs> okay, that part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that part is a little Which we all thought, like, well, I think we kind of said, like, oh, man, he might actually die in the fire, and this man is like fireproof. <laughs> But for me, it's just like, I don't know, I just look at the episode as a whole, like, it was such, like, overall really good, uh, I guess I just didn't think much about, like, the way he died, yeah. so, yeah. I guess I just overlooked it, because I was too hyped did, uh, on the whole episode. That was the only did, part that bothered me. Did either of you guys think that the truck driver looked like the coach? When you he first did, saw yeah. His face? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, super similar, I was like, wait, this has to be, like, on purpose in some way, because he's, like, guiding, you know, Mio to be like, oh, are you sure you want to be traveling out here at your age? And then, you know, he saw the the hummingbirds and, like, the lights outside the window. That was pretty cool. Stuff. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. This this season is doing a really good job with um kind of the, the metaphors and, and the relations of different things, so... Yeah. Um, I would agree with David. This was kind of a perfectly packaged uh, comeback for Joe, and then now we're going to see how he got to the depths that he did and kind of resolving now with Sachio and, and the old gang. Because I think so like, I'm excited when it started, that. like we we're kind of like not confused or kind of like cautious of what's going to happen. Like, cause it was such a huge, like, like turn from what we're used to. But like after this, arguably, like I just, like I, I didn't feel it was like it was a waste. Like usually other shows, you kind of would think like, why are we going through all this? Shouldn't we, I don't even know what's going on with the main character, but I feel like this really added on to, to Joe and having him just, like, on his road to recovery, basically, especially, with like, getting rid of, like, the painkillers, so. Yeah, this was really good. This was, this was, a, like, it's, like, so far, like, still, this show is, like, the most surprising for me this season. Like, it, like this, this first four episodes were so good. Yeah. I, so I, I really say, shouldn't, I, like, uh, I say that, too. I take back yeah. everything about you, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still, take it back. Man. I just need I just need Johan to watch this just looking so translate the Spanish stuff. I know, right? That night I still like like I honestly like I know Sasha gave like the first season a hard time, but I think he would like this or like this more than the like even the first season. Like it feels like it's it would fit like more of his interests. Yeah. Like I really I don't know, I just really like the shift in the the character drama focus rather than just like boxing from the first season. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, but I don't know. I think solid, it's just solid good. work again. So yeah, and again, like just, just continues. I know. I'm just I always want to appreciate the show too, just for again the animation. Like I just feel like I have never get this kind of animation ever again. So I appreciate it now while it's still here. Because hey, I don't. I don't think this, somebody else will pick up the animation. I don't think this this uh this type of style is popular enough that like that that uh other people other like shows are gonna replicate it or do something similar. So I can definitely see that. So. Yeah, I'm good. I'm still hyped for next yeah. episode. I'm super hyped to see how this ends. Like, this is definitely one of my tops for the season. Hopefully, the next arc uh, holds up. Yep. Agreed. Right. So that's gonna be it for Megal Box for there. Let's move on to our next show. Uh, Sekou Nagatoro San. Oh yeah. You know, to be honest, surprised we're talking about this. <laughs> really? Why do you say that? I don't know. I feel like. It's one of those guilty pleasure shows that I usually would like to watch, but I don't really talk about. Even <laughs> though it fits more of like the slice of life stuff that I usually love, like uh, Uzaki Chan. But man, like, remember how I said I used to hate Nagatoro's character in episode one? Yeah, now yeah. I actually really like her character. Oh, I don't know okay. why. Maybe it's filling like this missing void that I've been, you know, looking for, but. Uh, you want someone to tease you? It's too? Yeah, what he wants in a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It was like, man, you know. I don't think I'd ever go for someone like that. And then I'm just like, you know, I can work with this. Well, I haven't, <laughs> I, haven't been, I haven't been watching the show, but I did actually like the point where she was actually sticking up for him in a sense where 
she was yeah. not like allowing the other chick to uh, to uh, to touch him. Right, you know, yeah. she's loyal. She's 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 smart. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Only I'm I gonna, with this guy. I'm gonna say something here though. I'm really curious about that part specifically. I'm really curious to see how the show progresses. Like, I'm basically kind of going into this from like a psychiatrist analyzing things because here's the thing about that scene where she keeps that girl from touching him is that Mm -hmm. that is also very much a tactic that like toxic manipulators will use too like that that's a known tactic where she already introduced them giving him a hard time and then she's his savior by making them stop i'm not Mm -hmm. saying that she's actively thinking that but that that's a real thing that happens in real life so and it normally is a bad thing so i'm curious to just like see i think it's gonna go in the direction where she's pushing him to gain more self-confidence in the long run okay but like i just find it interesting to see how they portray it yeah that's it sorry oh i know that's that's valid yeah Yeah. i get what you're saying so we don't know either way so but i'm guessing it's not gonna be i don't for me i just don't think it's gonna be like that but we will see Oh, no, I don't think it will be like that. I just find it interesting that they portray it that way. And, like, I kind of hope that, like, people keep that kind of thing in mind. That, like, mm-hmm. most of the time, this behavior is not something that you should stick around with. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. It's, it's you know, life is like... Get out! Life is a gamble, you get know? Out. So you kind of have to just risk it to, to get, like, the bigger reward. So, I don't know. If it was me, I'd be really to risk it for the biscuit. You know what I mean? I am seriously <laughs> shocked that you like this girl. Like, she goes against everything I've heard. I know. Say. I, I, I don't know what it is. But if I had to choose between her and Uzaki-chan, I would definitely choose Uzaki, right? But, you know, like, this isn't this isn't that bad, you know? Cool. That's how people end up dead. <laughs> oh. You know, I got life insurance, sir. I'll be all right. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, was there anything else to talk? I can't even remember what else happened. Uh, I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I I just I kind of like the focus was just the two main characters. I like how they're not like introducing any. You know, you're not making a harm or anything. So I I hope this mm-hmm. they'll focus on the two main characters. That's all I'm really interested in. She's gonna deny that harm. <laughs> she really is. Um, Her friends are super they, obnoxious. I they will end up dead. <laughs> they are. Yeah. I cannot stand her. Like every second they're on screen is just like painful. And um, I also found it pretty interesting. Both Stratton and I noticed when we were watching, this is just like a random side thing. But like mm-hmm. when they were both getting drenched outside in the rain, her shirt was totally see through, but his was still opaque. And we were like, why? <laughs> like, you've already shown like transparent shirts with like nipples and touching them from the previous mm-hmm. episode. So like, why? Why be? Yeah. Why censor that now? Uh, and for him or the culture, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically what it is. All right, all right. Let's be fair. Right, I'm sure that day it was kind of chilly, so he decided to wear a thicker uh, undershirt. Okay. Okay. undershirt, right? So that's why you couldn't see it. Do back when I was their age, I used to wear a thick undershirt underneath my other clothing. You know, I don't know why, but I used to do that as well. So maybe they just caught him at a good time. You know. The show is just speaking to Koo. <laughs> Koo actually... Oh, yeah. Apparently. Resonation, I can see it. I'll, I'll Koo apparently. actually consults for the show on the side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the show, show is... <clears throat> The show, by the way, it still has, like, good animation for some reason. Like, I don't know why, like, there's so much budget on this show. Like... It actually does look really nice. <laughs> like... Just, just like curiosity, who... Koo, I'm assuming you think the girl is cute. David, do you think the girl is cute? I mean, kind of, but like, it's just the problem is the personality. So, okay, I was just curious because I've seen people arguing about it online. Like, if they think she's even actually cute or not, I think she's. Oh, I think she's I kind mean, of cute she's... when she doesn't have the crazy eyes, you know. Oh my god! Or when she's not saying perv every other word. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's mm. annoying. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I am no. Well, I, I, again. I hear you, okay. and normally I wouldn't be to this kind of thing, but I think for me it's because it's something that's different, right? It's been a while. Hey, it's all, right. all of us have our things. Don't right. worry. We don't kink shame here. I've seen uh, a lot of people Apparently. like the little <laughs> smirk like that she has, some kind of like the little like cat tooth fang thing, so... I know okay. that's been something that, that I've been seeing as I've been skimming across I mean, Reddit. Like, yeah. yeah, that's why I I, I thought, thing, that's why I the manga like was that. such, such a yeah. big uh, meme format, just because like so much... Uh-huh. The show is just... What, bunch of memes or meme pictures oh. well we will continue to meet from here on up then yeah i got nothing else i got nothing yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll see 
But again, guys, she's loyal. She's smart. <laughs> it's okay. All great qualities. All great yes. qualities. Yes. Yes. No red flags at all. Yep. Yep. That's that'll be it for Nagaro san and for Ku's girl. Mm. Move on to our next show. All right. Let's talk about uh, I'm a spider. So what? Oh, I'm gonna take a, a play from your book, David. Where not really much happened this week. <laughs> <laughs> your thoughts, Ku? Basically. But no, uh, uh, go ahead. You got it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, this is the shit that I was talking about earlier. Is like, you know, I, I love, like, you know, fleshing out character and, you know, showing their growth. But how do you, why would you follow up last week's episode with this? You know, right? like you had so much momentum going and you just follow up with some kind of comedic trope about uh, a character that's, that's already gotten way too much airtime. It didn't really progress the story, I feel like, because... I think, like, the fact that the mother all of a sudden is able to pop out of the labyrinth whenever she wants, and for some reason Kumiko is, like, super special, that she's doing all this to bring her back, like, I, I don't really care for it as much, and it doesn't make sense to me. No, I, I totally agree. It feels very kind of off-base of everything else that they've tried to, you know, deeply root into the, the rulings of this world and everything. Um, so... Yeah, I, I totally agree that it was it was an odd choice of kind of, you know, follow up content from such a great last episode. Um, I think there should have been a better split between um, Kumiko and then back towards uh, Shlane and the human group. I know we got, you know, a few minutes at the very end, but even with what we saw there, I was kind of like, what, what's the point of that? Like, is it just that you don't want us to forget, like, you know, what they had just experienced and what they're doing next? So, um, yeah, I can't help but, you know say that this this week's episode was definitely a lot more mid and kind of meh um so hopefully you know this is the last that we see of these type of things it's like once kumiko got out of the cave i was like i don't want to see the cave anymore we've seen the cave for you know 12 episodes now like Mm -hmm. let's get to that eventual meeting of you know kumiko and the others in this group um if i had to give any positives i would say i i did kind of like the the marionette type spider that was mm. controlled like the, the different strings and everything mm. um i thought that was kind of cool but um otherwise i guess just looking forward to uh what kumiko is going to evolve into next because i know that's where the episode left off with her of going into that yeah. next form of evolution right but uh, although yeah. if anything like if anything right the only thing that showed promise was the fact that if the marionette is another evolution like a hidden evolution form like maybe uh the demon lord that we're currently seeing maybe that's also like a different hidden evolution form as well and that's what this is hitting towards right okay otherwise yeah otherwise this episode was basically it's it was kind of useless yeah Uh, (laughs) it's definitely a throwaway if you don't have to say something like "Eh, you could skip this episode and you'd probably be fine yeah you wouldn't be missing much to be honest so yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, a little disappointed, but I mean, that's how the show kind of is, right? Like sometimes it's a low, and then you know, other times it's pretty hype. So yeah. And cool. again, because we have so many episodes to work with, I think I'm personally <laughs> kind of okay with it. But but to your point, yeah. you know, fool me once, like you know, shame, shame on you. Fool me twice, like all right, shame on me if I'm continuing to to let you do kind of these filler or lesser content type episodes. But we got a right. lot to work with, so I'd be a lot more mad if this was only like a 13, 14, or whatever shorter stint so true right but yeah i think that's that's pretty much it yeah unfortunately <laughs> i know unfortunately. usually we have so much more to talk about and we're just like oh we got these cool new characters and this new revelation and now we're just like yeah you know you some, get the uh, dungeon stuff that yeah shit happened shit happened <laughs> yeah, shit happened let's uh next next slide please <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess we'll end uh, there for i'm a spider so what move on to our hmm. next show let's talk about shadow house Oh Ooh. man, oh, boy! You know this show just continues to give. I keep like when I was like thinking about watching the show, I kept thinking it was like a character like drama focus, and then this episode happened. Like, what the hell is just this going on in the show? Yeah, like, we went fucking full on like horror esque. <laughs> and then, and so. then, oh god, uh, was it was it a girl, the girl's name? Amy Rose, or Emmy Rose, or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. they just got possessed by the soot, and then like. Had some weird, creepy, like, grudge face going on. Like, oh, my God. Show's creepy. Yeah, they're they're showing that, you know, hey, there's some dark, messed up things going on. And 
I think it's just a really good kind of juxtaposition of, you know, these very cheerful and, and bright living dolls versus now the the scorches and the phantoms that we've learned about, you know, the accumulation of this soot that the uh the royal shadow family kind of dispels from their yeah. bodies. So like the having that like part of the lore, it like the whole like cleaning up the soot thing makes so much sense now. Like we're actually giving a really good reason why like they put all this effort into like cleaning the soot instead of just just because so yeah they have to keep things clean or things of that nature so totally totally agree with that um other than that though uh i think i'm you know again really enjoying the direction it's taking it's showing us that there's a very deep backstory to be kind of unveiled here through the eyes of amilico um and so i think the other part that really stood out for me from this week's episode was um the final meeting that we got to see with more of the elite yep. shadow house members who are sitting in front of that fireplace and talking about you know the different um reveals that certain you know shadow house members are going to have upcoming and then seeing that one kind of like uh i don't want to say he was like a butler type figure but that very final guy who was talking about like oh this is my chance to get to like you know level three or, or rank three of the shadow house like guard so now i'm totally interested of like okay what does that system comprise yeah. of and i, I oh, again man. i thought this was like character trauma between like between a miracle <laughs> and kate and now it's like now this is huge organization that we're just getting involved right away too so <laughs> just adding more to that lore I feel kind of bad because, like, I'm enjoying this show so much. I, I, I turned to Stratton after I watched it, and I was like, I find this show so fascinating. Like, I just, I abs I'm addicted to it. And now that they've added some of those creepier elements, too, totally on board for that. But I just have nothing for, like, ideas, theories, what's going on. Like, I've got, I've yeah. got nothing. And uh, so I feel bad because I can't even begin to theorize. Like, I just don't know. I mean, you just, I think just if sit anything, there that's, just that's a good it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh it's, yeah. It's I think it's a good something thing where it's like head. we can't explain where it's going, and mm -hmm. you know that's something that's a a kudos to the show of like you know uh, really um, pulling you in. I really appreciate shows that just feel like a really well rounded package too, and that's what Shadow House feels like to me. Like the opening, the opening is great. The ending is great. The art direction is great. Everything is consistent with itself. The story, the, the story is interesting and compelling. The pacing is great. Like just everything about it has been fantastic so far. So I, I like it when all the details are paid attention to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Justin, I know you said you're like that juxtaposition, and I I understand why they they do they're doing it this way with like just the creepy nature, but then it's like it's balanced out with like more of the cheerful side. So I don't know. I just I'm just thinking like I kind of part of me wishes that I kind of would go like like um. Like double down on the creepy factor, or just like, mm -hmm. especially when I, like noticing like the soundtrack, it's like very cheery and stuff. When I feel like it was like more quiet or have more more ambience music, or did I just like? And then once the creepy stuff happens, like lean into that. I think maybe a bigger impact. It could have had bigger impact. That that's I guess that's that's just for me personally. I think like I feel have more impact. Whereas here, it's like it's. I think like if it's like if you're not used to that, that kind of like juxtaposition in anime, it's kind of it's kind of weird and confusing so i get that so i think mean, i still i guess i still enjoy it this way i think but i, I just imagine if i read the manga like about like something like a soundtrack and voices to do like i to, to take in i think like i think the manga would, would probably be like more creepy for me just because i have to imagine what everyone says while like seeing right. all this happen so that's like well, the only I, thing I, i'm sure that probably contributes to why you know the manga readers were were so excited with the adaption and, you know, to come through a studio like Cloverworks and I'm happy for them after, you know, the rough last season that they had, that they're, they're it was looking like they're having a, a real win on their hands with, uh, with this show. So definitely looking forward to see what we have to learn next of this very deep background that we're starting to get, you know, some light on for lack of a better word. Um, but I'm really hoping they start to introduce the other characters that are the other, like uh shadow yeah, part. I think we see them. I want to see more than so I, I think right? so, yeah. introduced to it and I'm curious like because like yeah the, the, the final scene they showed like the the candidate um like the candidate uh screening or whatever or the debut so I wonder mm -hmm. if we're gonna get that like soon or is that supposed to be like end of the season if it's supposed to be like 
right? Because again, we only have 13 episodes. We're already three episodes in, and all we've really seen is Amilico, Kate, and a small nibble of the outside world. Actually, I, I actually wonder how much like of like fighting is actually got to be in the show. Is just is this just supposed to be more of a showcase between like the living dolls and like the phantoms? That's supposed to be more of a creepy factor, not as in like yeah, like do, that's a good shadows, point you bring like, up. Are the shadows gonna get involved in any of this? Are they gonna get caught up? I honestly in any of this? hope they don't have much fighting. I would rather have it be more of that like eerie survival type factor where yeah. you know we're not standing up against you know these these entities, these phantoms. Um, just because I'm I'm much more about like the oh yeah kind of uncovering of information than people fighting. Stuff. Actually, I wonder too like, how normal. how serious is like the soot sickness gonna be because they. May it sound like like just get cleaned up and it'll be fine. I wonder if like a living doll will actually like stop functioning because of it, or if they go that far. If there's yeah. if maybe like later on, there's gonna be like this huge infestation of soot in the house, and like everyone just gets like drowned in soot or something. I don't know how far they're gonna take that, so we will see. Definitely, definitely a, a potential to occur, but um, yeah, really loving the show. I'm glad to see you know we're we're getting a lot of support from uh readers and and viewers and everything so just hoping we can uh work towards a i guess uh satisfiable conclusion since we only have 13 episodes and obviously i'm sure we'll get continuation but too early to tell yeah no i think that's gonna be it for shadow houses a lot of surprises this season this is definitely one of them so looking forward to the rest of it right, so that'd be it for shadow house move on to our next show uh, let's talk about Hige Hero. Hmm. Mm. Um, so, how about that opening, fellas? I, I was gonna. I was just gonna say. I'm glad I was watching that in the safety of my room and not, you know, just like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna watch this in the living room or something of that nature, and well, you know, someone okay, just come opening, by with no context. That opening is one thing, but then just just the revelation later when she's talking to the other girl. I was like, oh god, just all the implications. Like, oh god. Yeah, this is almost going the way that I was like the the path that I was like, oh god, please don't go it, please don't go this way. But then they backed out of it thanks to um thanks to our you know our awesome MC. Yep, Yoshida the Chad, <laughs> or the Saint. We will call him the, the Saint. Chad, my God, the Saint. Because you gotta go. admit, he's still trying to go after Goto, and he might have a chance here. Who knows, right? So all he had to do was just shave and iron his clothes, and apparently, you know, he, he can kind of put his foot in that door now, so. <laughs> he looks uh, like he has his stuff together. Yeah, apparently. Getting there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think at this point, we can, it's, it's kind of safe to assume that no matter how bad it may look, right, like how, if, if they would ever cross that line, like Yoshida would bring us back saying, nope, nope, I'm a good guy. Uh, you we're, we're here to make this wholesome anime, and nothing bad's gonna happen here. Mm. So, so hopefully that's the case. The one nice thing about this episode, it felt like they that this was kind of like the like the end of the arc, I guess, of uh of that kind of like awkwardness about them living together. Because he he even made a comment, basically, this is when we like felt like we were actually truly like live actually living together. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. where it, just, it made it sound like you know that where they're not gonna go with that path as of right now. They're they kind of have that clean like cleared up right now. Uh -huh. So we'll, we'll yeah, see if it still holds. Because the end of the episode of like about like the ending, they, they played the ending song throughout the, it. So that's how you could tell it was like the end of like it was a special episode, end of like the arc. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, I felt like it was a good one. Do you think though, with like the the resolution of um, our main character, that it won't potentially, you know, down the line go back to that op It'll... that opportunity of them being in a relationship it'll come back i, de I definitely don't think you know the cards are off the table so yeah, yeah. So. But... <laughs> from my previous experience with a bunch of like shows that are similar to this it always <laughs> comes back like right. it, it never is just dead it's dead yeah. for a period of time but it comes back so I, I can definitely appreciate that where you know obviously he's in this coup is you know said in in previous uh podcasts for this episode for these episodes is that he is trying to instill good moral values within Sai, who has been just kind of thrown into the seedier, dirty side of this world and, and kind of made her take a uh, evaluation of what she was doing before this and being like, hey, things don't need to be this way. Like, you know, you're fine just being a normal, regular high school girl. Like, you should be enjoying these sort of things. Like, and then it may get to that point of like, all right, now that, you know, you're not inadvertently just 
you know, connecting with guys because you think, you know, you can just use your body as a tool, then it'll develop to a more wholesome potential for a relationship if it right. does come full circle yeah. back with, with them. Uh, I just want to, I mean, I just want to say, like, uh, a lot of the discussion around this show is mainly about them, about Yoshida, because he's the main character. I feel like it should really be about Sayu, because she's the one that's going through the most here. So, sure. like, so it's really going to be about her development, honestly, and just how yeah. she will get over this. And I just feel like uh, there's got to be a point where she, ha- like, has to, like, at least talk to her parents or something. Because we know, like, it wasn't her parents that, like, that caused her to run away. So, but that's going to be an important resolution in the story. Just her finally, like, getting the courage to, like, talk to her parents and tell her what hap- tell them what happened and stuff. So. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. I'm sure I there's going to be a gonna, lot more, gonna, uh... It's gonna be a very hard thing for her to do. It's it's gonna be something. It's gonna be a very important episode. So we'll see how the show will handle that. We'll see if we even get to it with the, with twelve episodes. I guess maybe not this it, season. I guess eventually. It's just like the big thing. I guess I'm just like looking forward to. It's like it's like one of the most important things in the show that they have to get right. Right. The original source is still going, right? I don't know. It's got it right. Oh, we'll, we'll, we can check later. But uh, right. I'm, I'm, I feel like it is. I, I still don't know what direction they're going to go in, just because the name of the show is called I Shaved and I Brought a High School Girl Home. I still want to know what, like, I still want to know why is that so important that it has to be the title. Because well, technically, shaved. that's not even what happened. He brought a girl home and then he shaved. <laughs> yeah. So and maybe, it's just a, maybe it's just like a miss. Um, I mean, lots, like lot, lots of like Japanese. Uh, I mean, lots of Jap- ti- Japanese titles, like in manga, light novel, it's like they do something like silly, and it's just like it's like the first gimmick, but then like it's nothing to do with that at all. Like, yeah. But like I said before, like I, like, I actually like the, like the little story of like how you know he shaved and he's just you know got some of his shit together and it was just kind of going from there. It was nice. But he, and his like own own thing too, like what shaving meant for him. Yeah, I mean, I like it actually. Again, for me, it's like I think I just feel like. The main focus should be on Sayu. I think she's like the more important character. I think we'll go more world. into her kind of her yeah. arc once. I I think if anything, I'm really looking forward to the introduction of the blonde haired high schooler that they know they've been oh, yeah. showing in like the openings and stuff. Uh, so yeah. hopefully that'll give a a new relationship for. I think, uh, I think, it, I think it's in the openings. I don't remember anything in it. So oh okay, I'll, I'll look forward oh, to it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, she should be so, so, next episode for sure. That's what yeah. I was thinking. So, so this arc, this next arc, Mike, like it was like they're kind of like both arc at the beginning or like the kind of the start now maybe might be Sayo's arc when she returns yeah. to high school. Um, yeah, either potentially that or yeah, because I don't know how else they would. Yeah, I don't know how else you just um, randomly picks up another high school girl. Yeah, <laughs> I'm much again, that boys. <laughs> I picked up another high schooler girl. Puts on you know sun tinted sunglasses. Um, <laughs> um. Fuck, what was I going to say? Um, the one thing that I hope doesn't happen is I don't want there to be a continued relationship between Sayu and the one co-worker. I know they had that moment in the park on the bench where they were kind of, you know, having their heart to heart, but, but I don't know. I honestly no. don't. I don't want that to you be don't. like a... No. She knows. I, I she knows. Like got, because she says she was also... A, she ran away too, so I feel like she's, they're going to have that connection Yeah, later. it feels... Uh, it's like so convenient, but then I feel like it's also just going to be something that's used as a tool of like continued division like i know in the last episode it kind of seemed like they're just like oh okay like we're we're good both in our own respective lanes but i feel like it's gonna come to a oh, head again in some in okay. some weird way yeah yeah we'll see we will otherwise see. we'll wait and see <laughs> solid as always yes right. still loving it <laughs> all right so that's gonna be it for hige hero uh let's move on to our next show let's talk about uh moriari the patriot second season even though I guess I don't really have much to say for this episode, I guess. Yeah. Can I can I say something quick? Of Go course. Ahead. So I hadn't watched off. the epi- I hadn't watched the episode for last week, and by the time that I got to the end and she had to <laughs> rename herself, I yes. fucking died. <laughs> like, me and David were having a, yeah. a good laugh about that one. Yeah. Well, I remember you guys saying something, but I was only half listening because I didn't want to spoil myself, you know. And I was like, oh, what, what could it be? Like, how bad could it be? <laughs> And then, like, they said James, and, like, my feelers went up, you know? And then there, she's like, what could be related to us? Friendship, family, bonds? And I thought, oh, God, no, 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 no. 
It's so anyways, yeah. they went there. No, this is the topic me and Justin are talking about. How like, huh? That, what what do Japanese people think are cool British names? Let's <laughs> just go with this. <laughs> That's, that's how I thought about it. Yeah. Well, what was it? What was, what was the pick? James Bond. James Bond. James Bond. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> and the funny thing exactly is, with strength. this newest episode, they've now gone back, to, or they've gone to another historical kind of oh, yeah. figure name of Jack the, Jack Ripper. the Ripper. Oh, fun. So yeah. I, I, I can't knock them at the end of the day because they are keeping very, you know, well rooted to um, Sherlock Holmes and that kind of world in sure. you know, England and everything. Um, I'll but say for me, can, yeah, go ahead. They can do whatever they want with Jack Ripper. Just don't fucking say that Britain, like, is uh, was uh, was. Uh, it was another of, social uh, experiment to uh, uh, <laughs> a social a cause for the French Revolution. Making self feel important <laughs> like that, and say and say yeah, Ron, Ron's Pierre was the ancestor of Holmes. Like my God, picking on the French is just terrible. It's 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 getting um a little convoluted for my taste. Like just the overall plot, like this social experiment thing with the French Revolution. Okay, that um, that's that, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, th- okay. that, that part just it feels like so conspiracy theory. So yeah, like. yeah. The well, thing that I really d- didn't like from this episode, where you know the bank heist and that whole thing, like that was a fine thing. That was you know uh, uh, Irene becoming a full fledged member of the mm-hmm. Lord of Shadow crew. So that was completely fine. The part mm-hmm. that I had an issue was was the introduction of the teacher, the original mm-hmm. Jack the Ripper, and mm-hmm. how they kind of had their flashback of the Moriarty's going to the estate that he was kind of a, a servant towards at that time, and them asking him for like tips and tricks as to how to kill people more effectively. When I'm like, literally in the first episodes, we see that William Moriarty is already a very methodical individual. He made Albert kill his own brother. Like, he has no issues with killing people. So that was kind of weird to me. Like, you guys uh, know how to kill people. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's always there's more skills of like a trained professional, like a soldier would know. So I can kind of see that. That's true. Point. More in like well, assassination not, it's not or like, other things. But it's not like it's, it's not like they're actually on the mentality of how to kill. It's more like the literal, like, where, what's the technique? Showing my jutsu. Yeah, skills. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, uh. I don't know. I feel like it just added another layer of I hope, you know, there's not it's just probably going to be one more episode where we kind of see that interaction. But I feel like that did add a layer because that Jack the Ripper teacher was also the teacher of the colonel, right? Because Mm -hmm. of his involvement in the army and everything. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of agree with Taylor where I feel like we're kind of getting a little bit out of out of pocket. (laughs) Well, like, okay, here's another thing that bothers me too and maybe i just was like getting too frustrated and i was zoning out not paying close enough attention so correct me if i'm wrong but like the brother um sherlock holmes the older brother Mm -hmm. one i'm getting sick of people referring to him as the government this singular guy cannot have complete (laughs) control over the government he definitely doesn't seem like the one that would have total control over the government so like that's not how government works it just really bothers me and two um, I don't understand. Okay, so like, if he knows what, okay, let me think. He knows what William Moriarty is up to, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, so that makes no sense that he's just going to like let that slide and just like let, like what they're just going to be okay with them slowly taking down the like uprooting and murdering the noble class. They're just okay with that. Like the government isn't always at the crux of corruption. <laughs> like yeah. I don't know. Like it just seems. It- like, what is the point? There's, like, no the way, point yeah. to it. The way I see it, it's like, okay, because he, he was saying, what was it? Um, the way he was saying, it's like, because his family, because, God, like, Ron Spear was the ancestor, which is dumb, but like, he was saying because, like, because, like, his ancestor did, like, something like that, I guess he wanted to atone. So he was, his, he was saying his way of thing is, like, he wants to show loyalty to the state or like the british empire and so he's not gonna he's gonna overlook it because he i guess i guess he like he says as long as he's doing it for for the empire to make it better society i guess he's fine with it but yeah it's, well, it's you know a what very else? They could actually they could actually just be policy makers they actually just do their yeah, jobs and make it better no nah, <laughs> nah, then that wouldn't that wouldn't be fun to watch don't we be watching log <laughs> horizon and we know we don't want to be doing that so um I, I totally agree with you, Taylor. It is a, a very weak kind of agreement that they've come to that when you, you know, st- take a step back, 
doesn't make sense. But then to David's point, obviously the historical path that they've chosen to go and the involvement of the Holmes family and their own kind of shady work, um, well, this... I, I guess it, it fits, but... Besides it's kind that, of a, hey, our, our interests still align at the end of the day. The methods may we not be completely agreed upon, but hey, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your type of relationship. And besides that, it's like they do they do mm -hmm. have like the the leaked document that, that that's like the other thing. So I wonder like he's probably maybe he's thinking it's like I guess like you can try try and balance like you can try to get rid of them because they know like the the secret. So it's like, but how much effort is that gonna take compared to like yeah. okay if we just let them do their thing, they don't leak this document then maybe like it won't cost too much of an issue so yeah i just find it funny too of like it kind of shows like how <sighs> incompetent isn't the best word but it's the word that comes to mind when i think of like sherlock's brothers of tear point taylor if he is like the guy of like you know the the espionage and kind of underworkings of the british parliament and He's having, you know, this Moriarty Lord of Shadows group just run circles around him and they're kind of now doing that dirty work. It really kind of undermines even him. <laughs> and, and, you know, they got the the precious documents stolen by Irene. It's just like, man, like, you guys really don't have your shit together, dude. Yeah, they're a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, honestly, man. I'm surprised he's just not walking around embarrassed uh, by himself all the time. But to be fair to your point, I I'm glad that it's kind of weaker on that regard because then hopefully that is steering us back towards the main focus of this show of Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. yeah. and that engagement. So. Yeah. yeah. I tend to get back to that, that focal point a, a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, definitely was a more mid, it wasn't a like week. I wouldn't say I was like upset by it by any means, but it wasn't anything of like, Oh man, this was really good, but it's okay. Yeah. Yep. No. Uh, well, and also this this um this new arc that we're going to like we haven't really seen um Sherlock's involvement at all, so we'll see like what if he does get involved later. Yeah. Just be tricky, oh, just like Moriarty in. versus <laughs> versus the other Jack Ripper. Definitely. So I think that's gonna be it for uh, Moriarty the Patriot. <laughs> Move on to our next show. Uh, talk about Bakuten. Uh, I can start real quick. I don't. I don't really have much to say from this week's episode. Um, Same. Kind of what I had called last week, where I was like, "Oh, I wonder if they'll bring back the other friend who was at you know the first episode showing next to Kagayama." And lo and behold, when the MC is practicing his handstands, here comes that <laughs> other you know uh, past colleague from the middle school days, and then they introduce his team. So. It pretty much was what Begins. I thought with the yeah with the limited episodes of like okay you now have to introduce your main kind of rival and now that's where we're gonna get to so Did, we also found out that the voice of that guy is actually Hinata, which oh. is very hard to believe because it is very it is much much higher pitch. yeah but it is I, I, I double and triple triple checked yeah the personality definitely matches though in some regards oh, with voice, how voice positive inflections. and exactly. yeah voice inflections sound exactly like this they actually sound spot on yeah. Well, you guys, we're, what was this? Episode three or four? Are we reaching the drop point, Taylor? Is that where you're leading into? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to drop it. But I have to say that I'm a little bummed out by it. Like, I just feel like I don't care about any of these characters. I feel like they've been really Move. lazy about making us, like, in invested or interested in them. I don't know. I can't really get a feel for any of their personalities because they all are just kind of the same generic, like, positive personality. Um their coach, the joke about their, I'm sorry, their captain and his wife is getting really old. I've heard that joke like eight actually, times now. I, I don't actually, care. <laughs> well, I'm getting sick of it. With, pitch with certain audiences. Yeah, I actually. It's for the threatens out there. Yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, my wife. It's like, it's like, and everybody's just like, we've never met this wife. She does. She most likely doesn't exist. Every time I mean, you I, talk about it, I think it's hilarious. I thought it was funny the first time too. I don't know. And then like, I'm okay maybe, with it. The, like the MC, like I have no read on his personality at all. Like he's he basically it just seems to wander about aimless and is just one hundred percent influenced by whatever he eyeballs that day. Like yeah. he just happened into a uh, Ramen's rhythmic gymnastics thing, and he's like, "Well, I'm gonna drop whatever plans I had and go to this school and join this team because that's beautiful." To and be then fair. he goes there. <laughs> to be fair, he was a backup baseball player, so. 
I was messing with you with Ben's rhythmic gymnastics. If anything, I would agree with Taylor in the sense of like, one, we know we have uh, a limited set of episodes. There's only 12 episodes. So again, the fact that we're not really building out a deep investment in these characters, that's a big strike going against it. Um, and I don't think we're going to get, you know, that that deeper investment. No. Um, but to the point of the main character, I feel like it is kind of similar to Haikyuu. If you think about, you know, Hinata and the reason he decided to become vo- play volleyball was when he saw one of the members from that school playing he, in the like, tournament. But his but he is a much more... that did that the whole time. Like, he's yeah, yeah, singular. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Zoned in. But it's kind of similar where, you know, he came <laughs> after his baseball practice. But yes, much more far-fetched and out there. But uh, no, I totally agree where I can't help but feel that this show is taking a lot from other sports animes in terms of its character archetypes and designs. Obviously, you know, we have the Kagayama clone. We have Hinata clone now. We have the MC who's, to Taylor's point, and I agree with, it's not really lighting a fire under you for any of his driving like factors. And so um, I think for me, again, the soundtrack is what I've enjoyed. And and funnily enough, like during all the performances, that's when the soundtrack is like really shown. Um, But I, I agree that I'm not expecting too much spectacular from it. I think we're going to get, you know, a few more kind of training type things, and then they're going to have their face off against, you know, this, this rival. And really, I don't know how much farther we go with only 12 episodes. So well, I mean, we'll we'll get more of that, like the the soundtrack, like the uh, like facing other schools and stuff. This is just like the That's training arc, like it's like because this guy's very far behind, but because of the power of anime, this guy will catch up very quick. Oh, he so, has to, right? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so. so I think it'll be fine, but like it's like because the music is, I think, by far my favorite part because the especially during like the choreography or like the their their um I guess their performance. Was when we got like the high Q sounding vibes. Yeah, season so, one through three at least. Yeah, um, I just feel I mean, like this. Oh, go ahead, Justin. No, no, I was just gonna say from an animation standpoint, like it's a decent animated show as well. So. It looks really oh, yeah. nice. Like, the way that they use CGI is really good too. It's a good blend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, they, they'll go in like the CGI, and then they'll immediately like, when they go to the close up looks, they don't just stick with the CGI. It's actually yeah, they go back really to good the animation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's, yeah. It's, what were you gonna say, bad. Taylor? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, I know 12 episodes isn't a lot, but like if you look back on Yuri on Ice, that was only 12 episodes. And that came out like what? That's five or very six years true. Ago? Very and true. Five, yeah. or, five or six years later, there are still fans like me who are so obsessed <laughs> with Yuri on Ice. And we are still using the same freaking content from those 12 episodes to like make amvs or like find things to discuss about mental health or like there's <laughs> we still have shit to talk about like five years later from those 12 episodes we're a little bit crazy i'll admit it if but like anything, <laughs> they, they owe a lot to uh their opening as well with that history maker song i think that really solidified it as a fantastic series as well Shout out to <laughs> Dean Fujioka. he yes. did a great job yeah, yeah. I, that's fair but like even in the first episode you knew that the main character had like depression issues anxiety issues you found out that he went his whole life changed because the dog died you, fought, you there's so much you learn about the main character in the first episode and if nothing else you should flesh out your mc you know what i mean oh, and no totally all we know about um, our mc is he was bored of baseball and he saw a dance <laughs> and he's like that's for me and he's he's like, he was adorable i don't give that to him all the characters are adorable like to look at they're just so cute all of them but also yuri and ice came out four and a half years ago okay yeah. Damn. Feels like I'm longer. Yeah. <laughs> I know four and a half years ago, it feels like this damn show just came out like six months ago. If you look at anything online. But man. Anyway, I think that's right. really it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll continue. I'm good there. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that's gonna be it for Bakuten. And uh, keep the sports hype going on with burning k- kabadi. Something one. even better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Buddy. Dude. Dude, the new guy. He's, he's so uh, he's good. Pretty he's pretty open. I love good. him. I love him. Uh, his ability was uh, actually pretty sick. Well, at first, how uh, light this guy is, like how weak he just feels. Mm-hmm. And then um, it just looked like he was uh, almost like a trickster until it basically just seems like when he gets like kicked, when the, he kicks into like that next gear. Where he actually gets like into the zone, like he gets into the zone, like he just becomes basically like a like almost like a rabid zombie. <laughs> Not the zombies aren't already rabid, but you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, he's uh, dude. His character is just. It feels like it's just a mixture of all these other like previous uh, characters. Like the character design kind of reminds me of the uh, 
like this vampire overlord. I forget what the show is, but uh, it's a show about this guy who's bordered like the, the the underworld or whatever, and then all of a sudden this this human girl like crossed over to the demon world, and then she died, and she's now a ghost in a demon world, and he's spending like the entire season uh, trying to get her back in her real body. I don't know if you guys familiar with the show. Angels of Death. No, that can't no. be it. Never mind. I don't know what you're talking about. I have about. no idea. No? It sounds good, though. It's, I kind of want to watch it. familiar, yeah. But yeah, it's kind of, a, it's kind of an older show. Uh, okay. but yeah, so that's the character design. And you got, like, the, the Kuroko from Kuroko no Basketball personality where you can't really feel his presence. You can't, like, tell what he's doing. <laughs> and uh, you got, and then you have this, like, when he brings it up, like, to, uh, like, the next level, right? When he's, like, serious about Kabaddi. The next yeah, level. Yeah, he has his, like, ghoul-looking appearance where he's, like, super sinister. Um, yeah, like, this guy just has so many different, like, forms or something that I think it's it's pretty damn cool. So, Dude, I really like this guy so far. Comedy's still on point as well. Like, when they first, like, like I honestly thought, like, when he kept talking about how, how like, light this guy feels, how weak he was. When, it did that, when they did, like, the arm, the, the arm battle, I thought, like, okay, maybe this, I was like, is there something we don't know? Does this guy have a chance? And he just gets obliterated. I was like, okay, never mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but even like those kind of things where he, he even like had, to, I think wait, he had to check with the bald guy. He's like, all right, I need to check if I became stronger. And then he got destroyed by the bald guy. Uh-huh. He's like, no, it's it's just the uh, it's just him being that um that light. But dude, also I am very I actually want to see uh the matches where they actually have like seven on seven. Like when they said that, I was like, oh my god. Like just uh, just like how just how intense it's going to get. And then I, I mentioned it before, but we still don't know how this game is really played. <laughs> even <laughs> even the new guys, they've been like he's he's been here for like the past month or whatever, right? And even then, he still doesn't know like how the game is actually played. And I like how like for comedian's sake, the vice captain is like, "Oh yeah, that's not a part. First, you need to know how to just do your role, and then the rules come into later." And I'm just like, oh, thank God. I'm not the only one that was worried about it. So I actually kind of appreciate how they know how obscure this sport is, and they yeah. kind of make fun of it as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but while actually they kind of like continuously tell us, telling us more about it, because I, I remember we were talking about how like we were worried about pacing, and I'm thought, mm-hmm. and I thought like they're gonna have to go much longer. I'm sure with the training because none of us have heard of this sport. Not like I'm sure besides the people obviously like uh, who are like from the areas where this is this is popular. Mm-hmm. But then, um, but uh, no, it's just like when they go through that, and then when they actually, because it's a we're episode four, and we're still learning like new rules mm-hmm. about like the whole thing where because I because we I think we talked about how we weren't sure how many people were allowed to be on on uh, like on, uh, in the match, right. yeah, on a team at, like, and I didn't know that basically. And then we just learned this uh, this episode too, like if you tag somebody, they're out. But then if they tag some or, or not, ta- but if they get back, uh, like they actually get somebody back in. Yeah, they, like, if they score a point, then the person comes yeah. back in. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like dodgeball. Dodgeball yeah. rules, yeah. Yeah, but it's like all these things. It's like, oh damn, that actually sounds pretty sick. And then you find like, oh, you can actually have up to seven people out at a time. I'm like, mm-hmm. god damn, like that place is like the court is like in itself is small. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, I don't know, I like it's. But I remember um, <clears throat> we were when we were talking with um, um, uh, oh shoot, who who was it that that actually to, uh talked to, talked to us a hey. little bit about. Ayush? Yes. Yeah, when when Ayush kind of like mentioned that he was a little bit worried about the animation just because I feel like cuz he he knows about the sport and then um I can see how they're definitely going to go they're going to continue doing like the more tactical approach just because mm-hmm. the animation budget I don't think can really hit that you know hit like that uh that next level point. But I think it but I, honestly I've been fine with the whole tactical kind of like mind games. Yeah, um, it's been pretty good so far, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, I love this show. <laughs> Oh, this show is so good. So good. <laughs> I, like I like this show. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> Blast for me! Get out of here. Go back to your bakutin. <laughs> God, whoa, whoa, I'm just, whoa, whoa, I'm just like me and Ku are just contentious tonight. <laughs> We're just not like meshing well today. I don't know why. It must. These stars ended, and it was all downhill from there. Yeah, That's what it is. The, the power duo for the show is now. Yeah. It's not the he, same. B Stars was the glue that kept us together. It Unfortunately, was. It, it's when expired. It comes to sports, when it comes yeah. back, when yeah. it comes to sports, yeah. blood. blood <laughs> Chad. Anyway, th- this is again becoming like one of my uh, like 
Oh, surprise! I guess surprise shows for myself, like how much I actually mm. enjoy the show. I did not think I was gonna like it, at, like because this wasn't even one of the ones I was actually gonna pick up. And then I'm surprised you're um, watching and, it because yeah, I saw, no, I, I saw it, it like, announced. I was like, I didn't think anyone was gonna watch this. Oh, I, I I knew nothing about it, and then I I knew like uh, I think who I think you were first mentioned it, then Ayush commented about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll check it out. And then I, I liked the first episode, liked the second one. And then I was like, all right, I'm just going to stick with it. And it def- definitely uh, it is a solid show for me this season. But, good to hear. Yeah. Good to hear. But I think I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I can't wait for next week's episode. Hopefully they introduce another oh, awesome finally character a match. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it showed there was going to be a final, finally, like an uh, actual match. Whether or not it's like mm-hmm. a practice match, who knows? Yeah. This so. will be the first one. Yeah. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see 5v5. Um. <laughs> All right. Right there for Burning Kadabi. Uh, move on to our next show, Mashio no Oto. Oh, um, another banger. Oh, God, the feels, guys. If you didn't get the feels from this episode, you're dead to me. All right? I, dropped, I dropped the show. <laughs> oh, you're dead to me. Oh, there it is no. again. I don't, even know if, I don't even know if Beastars can save this. He told Beastars come back. Oh my god, you're dead to me. I don't me. even know anymore. Man, that is that is the statement. Oh, um, I can't. I can't. I mean, I I love the music in this show. But it's more it's definitely one you have to kind of appreciate slice of life because they're very they're going very hard on like the slice of slice of, mm. slice of life approach. Uh just with the, it basically seems like he's just gonna be still looking for his sound. Uh, the, the the whole like moment with like the grandma I thought was actually like really nice. That was like the one part, the one point I thought, damn, this is really good. Mm-hmm. But then when she said like, oh, this still isn't the sound, I'm thinking, you bitch. <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> Come on. She she clearly explained why, right? I, I, you know, I know, actually, the answer that he was looking for. Sir, you know, his, his okay. All right, go ahead. But you're in the wrong. So what far. did you want? Or you want this, this old grandma to just lie to his face and be like, oh, cow, that was. You know, no for no perfect. Thank you so much. And then after she's just like, yeah. it sounded nothing like that. Shit. <laughs> I'm waiting, Strange. Go on. I'm waiting. No, no, no they, they, to be fair, they did they did explain about how uh you know when when she heard the song, he had basically just a beat to hell um shamisen. So mm-hmm. completely understandable. They obviously it's gonna sound like ass. And also it sounded like this was like the beginning of like the song, and then he basically it sounded like um, like his grandpa, you know, went his entire life basically perfecting this song mm-hmm. to like the end of it. So it, it would make sense that you know it would, re- it would resonate to her more of like the original sound, but she actually like like recognized that this was the song. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, I I definitely agree with you that this was a good emotion packed episode, and music is is fire as always. Um, I think for me, I'm glad that we moved very quickly past this uh playing of the song for uh shuri's grandma because mm-hmm. what i'm really interested in is you know we did see a bit of a snippet of a, a new character from the school um when uh setsu was practicing the song and he gave him like the little figurine to help kind of like call him like yellow chick oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm sure that guy in a way will be a shamisen player of sorts and kind of get involved in the crew or something uh or the club excuse me so for me i'm really looking forward to like the club members now coming together um mm-hmm. and then as much as I, i'm not the biggest fan of umiko i know we see her there at the end getting her very sensuous massage um and and um you know hatching her new plan to throw setsu into uh this tournament for a uh, shamisen mm-hmm. player so i'm really looking forward to that and more of like a battle of shamisen players because we've really mm-hmm. yet to see that other than when uh setsu and his brother play with each other um but i will say i i really like the brother because in the interaction we saw this episode when you know setsu's calling him and he's just like man like i don't know if i can do this for shuri like i don't want to you know disgrace her grandmother and he's just like yo man like stop being an idiot like you're overthinking everything like just do you like you have the skills you have the talent and he's just like yeah man you're right and it's just like i don't know i haven't i've never had any siblings so i can only experience the sibling relationship through what i see in anime and other you know experience i hear from friends obviously i know having siblings can also be a big pain in the butt but um just i enjoy that that that, that whole conversation when he basically said that he looked like a fool in front of that one dude oh true (laughs) true so i really i really enjoyed that i'm I'm getting to see more of that uh brotherly love that they've Mm -hmm. been showing over and over again which i really like yeah, it's a siblings are hit and miss. By the way, it's like a lottery. 
It's like a box of chocolates, right? You don't know what you're going to get until you, you pop it once open. Once you open it, it's too late. You can't return it. You're stuck with it. Yeah. Oh, man. I hate, oh, I hate that game when I do that with the C's candy, and you're just like, oh, man. It has, you're like, I don't know what this is, but you take that bite, and you're just like, oh, my God. What have I done? The the one thing I do appreciate about this show, though, where um, it, it doesn't do it as well as uh march comes in like a lion like when they're like the when the songs are actually playing they kind of go like in those uh those like uh i don't want to call them like almost in like in their head they go through those um oh god I, justin have you ever seen or sorry cool um um like you know how like uh, the metaphors i guess in a sense where but they show them really well and march comes in like a lion yep. like i feel like this show like they're they're doing it but i feel like they could they could give like that next step up to have it be like uh even like more almost impactful because that's that was my favorite part of march comes in like a lion mm-hmm. and i feel like this is the perfect show that that would it would definitely benefit with those moments yeah if, if anything uh yeah like they're they're when they try to like manifest the the emotions that people feel i, I definitely do feel like it's a little bit too basic Could be more. Uh, I, I do wish they would have put a little bit more extra effort to make it more unique with each uh more emotion too. yeah to with each like emotional uh like emotions that, that's not overwhelmed them at the moment but yeah. uh yeah yeah I think, I, really that. I think that's one of the things of why i'm excited for this upcoming like tournament phase where hopefully we get to see now Those this very diverse are. sets of players that have this like different sound and different emotion and to your points right and it's really going to be kind of the artistic adaptation that they do with this sound that could mm-hmm. really make it it shine so. yeah cuz there's there's a bunch of moments in march comes in march comes in like a lion where um like like the the scene that they were in it really had no kind of like feeling or what anything whatsoever but when they went into like the metaphors and like they show like the like 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 uh those moments it was just intense and just like those just those moments alone just made me tear up these ones i'm not to that level but we'll see who knows yeah but that's where the the sound is supposed to come to play like overall that it's probably just the like the music like just the soundtrack that's just winning me over you know, honestly, and then, yeah, it's not as deep as I'd like it to be. It's somewhat basic, but I think overall as a package, if if you if you like these sort of things and you pay attention to the details, uh, I'd, I'd say it's, it's it's done really well. I, I would I have, to have to say because then even with like say the point you brought up with the grandmother saying, oh, you know, like that's not the sound that your grandfather had, but it plays into the whole story of what uh, the main character was looking for, right? Sets you. Right. His grandfather told him, you know, just stop playing because all you're doing is trying to copy me when you yeah. should be finding your own sound. And mm-hmm. with this, this is the start of that, right? Uh, once he went into the riff where it uh, like diverged away from his grandfather's piece, he threw in his sound. And it wasn't like the same as his grandfather, but it was still just as good. And he finally found his sound, which is mm-hmm. what is going to help propel him to be the next best player. <laughs> all right. So no, totally um, agree. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I, I really like this episode. Like I said, very emotional, but I feel like they hit all the points that they needed to hit, and like the music totally backed it up. Even though the visual is slightly lacking, I still think it was okay. So, yeah, yeah. they as long as the mom stays out, I'm good with the show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she wasn't singing, bro. All right, relax. Okay, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as she doesn't have to make that noise, we're good. We are good to go. Cool. Wow. That's all, all I got. Right. Just went in there. <laughs> so that'll be it for Fashio no Alto. Move on to our next show. Let's talk about Vivi. Taylor, this Ooh. was your favorite episode, I think you said, right? Of Vivi? Yes. Yes, it was. Care to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps? Maybe a, a small crumb of, of feedback? Here, here. Look, I hope this helps, all right? Don't let me stop you. Hopefully that helps. Um, yes, Kua has, Kua has left the room. He's no longer yes. here. Kua, Kua, you're not with me, No, I am, but okay. I don't want her to be intimidated by what I'm about to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> those moments. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not super emotionally attached. This was just my favorite. Oh, I remember what it was about. Okay. So, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, yeah, I liked this episode a lot. Like, I really liked the concept of, um, like, analyzing this relationship between... Um, a human and an AI. I liked the fact that it seemed like he knew that he was sending them um, to the island, knowing that, you know, like what would happen to his wife. Um, I, I just like how that played out. I felt like it was subtle, but impactful. Um, 
I also really liked all of the AI robots on the island. They were super adorable when they threw that little welcome celebration. I my, like my heart melted. It was like having a bunch of Wallies just <laughs> <laughs> like a long lost friend. It was great. Um, okay. And then I, I'm curious to see, but I'm also scared to see what happens with the. I forget their what their name are. Something that starts with a T. But the Tolka. Tolka. Yeah. I'm so tired of seeing that guy. That guy just needs to die. <laughs> oh my god uh, that was gonna be one of the points i want to bring up is i'm tired of how conveniently he is involved in now all these interactions even the, though they are years apart from each other and he just happens to be in the right place at the right time every oh i actually kind of like the fact that he's always there because i feel like i mean i know it's convenient i i mean you no, can't i think that's the biggest that. thing it's convenient and i understand <laughs> what they're going to try to do with it of yeah. changing his perception of you know ais and all that but I like how I like how this episode where you know seven years ago or no sorry um I think at well at this point it would have been like twelve years ago where he you know comes up with this big elaborate plan to basically have like that entire like hotel area crash into the earth and then this one he basically just shows up with a fucking boat to an island (laughs) with with the tote guy where it's just like this guy like he's just losing it like he has there's no plan whatsoever. He's just going for it, just straight forward. I feel like he's like Team Rocket, where he's like, what half-ass ideal oh. <laughs> should we try to go with this He's time? becoming Team Rocket, because he actually, <laughs> it seemed like he had like a like seven years where he basically found like this AI robot and came out with this giant thing to basically, <clears throat> you know, come uh, come up with this this plan to have this entire thing just crash to the earth. This one, I mean, he's just going face, you know, just, you know, uh, just frontal. With was four helicopters, four four tugboats, and then they basically just gonna hope for the best. Uh, yeah. I will say one more uh, one critique that I have is that I miss um, I miss the teddy bear. I don't yeah, like the cube. Oh, you don't like um, portal cube. yeah, Matsumoto's portal cube. Thank you. That's <laughs> yeah. what I was trying to say. It's depressing. I don't like I the cube. S- it just feels like it takes away like the personality. For but me, it can fly. Ooh. But it's a flying cube. Ooh. It, that is one thing yeah when they were first rescuing the guy from like the car chase and you know matsumoto's just floating around in his cube and like, stuff i'm just like, like oh no just kidding yeah just kidding <laughs> i can fly and i'm just like it's kind of the tail point i was like that would have been a lot better if he's just a teddy bear whipping around and stuff rather than just like okay now this cube that can do whatever yeah. i just want to say for uh, me um, the, the robots they remind me more of the ones from near automata they look way they look i was like gonna say too. that yep yeah, I, I haven't played that, so I can't really. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, just for me, all, it reminds me of Nier. All I could think of is Nier Automata, and then with the facility itself, I think this it's called what? Metal continue. Float. This cannot continue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then um, the fact that they call it Mother Base, I just immediately thought of uh, Metal Gear Solid oh, yeah. because in the latest game, that's kind mm-hmm. of like your base of operations is Mother Base. So I'm just <laughs> like, oh, cool. Where's uh, where's Solid Snake at? Where are these guys at? <laughs> Um, you should have but, totally had some sort of a solid snake Easter egg in there. So right. there's like some cardboard box crawling around. Um, but I, I am interested to see Ku's thoughts because, you know, it sounds like he's, you know, potentially maybe not a fan of this episode. And I can maybe potentially agree with it just in the sense of, um, well, obviously, before I hear his thoughts. But um, the one thing I didn't like is I feel like this episode's going to have pretty weak writing where I feel like that wife is obviously still like the one that controls this facility and there's going to be something uh-huh. of like her being evil or something it just feels pretty weak from a right point yeah i mean just at this point i don't feel like i know what direction they're taking it anymore right because if you you know even in the beginning they showed that you know with what vv and matsumoto is doing they're they're divulging away from the the main timeline i guess they're and then route. yeah and then like I, I don't really get like what could they have possibly done to make everything fast for twenty years. All right, so we basically um, cut off where Ku was having that great explanation. So my bad, Ku. Oh. oh my goodness! All right, basically, uh, run it back. Okay, <laughs> basically, before it was nice because there was like a clear like cause and effect, right? And then it looked like it was going to be smooth. It was going to be like uh like sophisticated, complex writing where it was it was going to be interesting, kind of unique. But now, now I feel like it's going to become very cliched writing, and the storyline you can kind of already see how it's going to play out. Like some of the things that they're doing doesn't make sense, even after all these years. Like um, 
<laughs> but, but, but basically, like I thought it was, I thought it was really interesting what they had going at first. But now it's kind of like I feel like it's lazy writing, right? You got time skips mm -hmm. here and there. There's not really a clear cause and effect as to because we did this, this is happening. It's just more of like a very simple explanation for what they did before, and I don't feel like it's satisfying enough to yeah. uh, just file what's happening, right? I would right. agree with that. I feel like we definitely have started to realize now the the model that these episodes will be taking of like all right time skip new event that needs to be interjected in there's going to mm -hmm. be some ai involvement where oh we thought the ai was good oh psych turns out the ai is actually bad so now we mm -hmm. need to step in and fix it um so i totally uh, agree with the the sentiments there ku and i think for me what i'm kind of more unfortunately realizing now is like i don't i mean obviously it's still too early to tell but now I'm just really starting to think like there's not going to be any like oh shit revelations. Right. I personally feel like you don't think so. I Maybe mean, they're, they're it'll still happen things. involving like Vivi and Matsumoto, but oh, they're, they're still I guess maybe games. next week will tell me for sure if we see. Well, I think the next ending, week's isn't going to be somewhere in the ending it's be, it could, you know. but I don't know. Yeah. Like I think with the okay. regular stuff, like maybe not. Yeah. Um, they are deviating from the original timeline though timeline. quite a bit. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll see. Yeah. Like they even like uh, mentioned but, how like they're it, twenty it's years like, ahead. It's like how Ku and and Jester say it. It's all it's it's all predictable because it's just like basically like everything you do is just like the thing you're trying to prevent. You just made it stronger. So, mm -hmm. mm. but but the AI is like actually seeing it like in a better light though. I'm not sure what the AI yeah, but that's is. What they're, they're, they're trying to prevent that because the whole point is that then it just makes advancing AI even faster. So then it gets to that point where. Like the war breaks out, or whatever. I wonder what like the the standing like uh like like how the AI like how the AIs were look or you know how they seemed I guess like back in like the other timeline, like where they seem like as like more like a negative light, positive light, like what like what could have actually yeah. caused it. And that's something um, probably we'll never know. Just yeah, with the, the yeah. Like episodes. We, so we could be going the good route. Who knows? Uh, I saw red, buddy. <laughs> Whenever you see red, that usually means a bad thing. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And come on, an AI marrying like an actual person, that's kind of creepy, you know? I mean, you have people marrying anime characters. Oh, so maybe, I don't it's know. It's not that surprising. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Um, I, mean, I yeah. basically Go agree ahead, with everything anyway. that you guys. Yeah, I basically agree with everything that you guys are saying. Like, I'm not emotionally connected to this show. I'm not going to, like, um, battle on a hill over this. I, I, it's, I, I, like, if I was to rate it right now, I'd be like a six. So, I mean, I just <laughs> like this episode more than the others, probably because I was just more in the mood to watch it. Um, but I, I will say that I think it's a little bit too early to, to say, like, if there won't be any big reveals or anything like that. I still feel like there's something that's going to happen, happen with Mashimoto or whatever. Matsumoto. Matsumoto. Yeah. Matsumoto. Yeah. Um, before the end, because just for no other reason than who the author is, there's got to be something that's waiting. So I'm kind of curious for that. And mostly I just don't really find it like... Like, I find the characters, like, tolerable. Like, it's not annoying. And I feel like there's a lot of, like, mid-shows this season. I, this is just a touch above. <laughs> but, yeah. Sorry, Justin, what were you going to say? Oh, no. I, I completely <laughs> agree with that. So. Yeah. We shall see. It definitely has kind of simmered down from the, the hot start that it had in these first. Yeah, two, I'm still enjoying episodes. the show. But, like, this episode, like, yeah, yeah I don't, same. not I hate it, but just, like, I, I couldn't, like, find much things to talk about this episode, basically. So that's, that's my feeling i'm still liking it. it's a kind of like typical where it's like approaching like that mid-season kind of a uh, lull. lull so we'll see how it picks up at the end yeah all right well <laughs> there for oh, yeah. vv we'll see how it goes for for next week and the rest of the season move on to Thanks our next God. show let's talk about 86 Oof, a oh. rip big rip was that one of your favorite girls I'm gonna be honest. Like, I would have never known who they were talking about if I didn't have, if like, if Taylor didn't look up on uh, my anime list. I had no idea who that was. <laughs> so, oh, the girl who died at the end. Yeah, when they look, were saying like the name, like, uh -huh. we, like we were like, who the hell's that? And then even at the end of the episode, we're like, who just died? And then we had to look it up what? online. But, no, uh, I have to confirm. Like the girl that died. the girl that died is the one that was talking with Lena and having oh, yeah, like, a more now. human yeah. conversation, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, no, I just wanted to make your eye like, understand correctly. Girl. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll say like. As much of a fanboy I am with this show, it's like I thought this episode wasn't. I don't know. I didn't even feel much for this episode. Like it felt like the no, first episode has thing. like much more of an impact. Monster. Whereas like this you one, monster. I mean, I still enjoy the show. It's like this. 
I don't know. Just something, about, something about this episode. I don't know. It's like the pacing or just like just the way they present it. It's like, because we kind of already knew, like, like I get it. Like, there's a lot of racism in this society. There's a lot of prejudice. And they're trying to show, like, hey, just because you're, like, our our handler doesn't mean, like, you understand what we're going through. Like, I get it. I kind of, like, I, I feel like that was established in the first episode. So I kind of wish. The second to the third. Yeah. yeah so I kind of wish, like, I feel like the strength of the show is, like, is really the action scene. So I wish you could see more, more of that. Or more in the lore like like we've only basically been like in lena's room and the the doctor's room and then like the the one like like building that the 86 people live so i kind of wish we expand outside of that too so i guess i guess they're trying to go more of the character focus but again it just feels like we kind of already went through that the first two episodes so hmm. it kind of felt like unnecessary this episode so, so this episode opened up with like that beach scene you know with like all the characters like oh, goofing yeah. around and, and, the river. Yeah. Yeah. and like yeah. it was a scene i turned to threaten and i was like i feel like this needs to happen later in the series like when we know their names and, and like there's too many characters i barely know who they are yet and so yeah. i can't really I mean, it's kind of yeah. cute but it's like I, it's not really funny like because i don't know you guys <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like nope. it's like inside <laughs> jokes and I, and I don't care and then like later on i think that david may be part of the reason why you're feeling the way you feel and i i feel it too is because, like you said, they've established there's racism. It's been established in every single episode. Like, we know. But then they're not, like, taking steps to move forward with an actual plot. There is some character development, so I'll give them that. Um, but the, no progress has been made plot-wise, really. It's, it's a girl died, but, like, we barely knew who she was. I don't know. And then on top of that... Um, oh, oh, shoot. What was my other point? Oh, yeah. And then at the very end... If you didn't already know that there's racism going on, there's some asshat who like yells at her for like five minutes straight at the very end, and it just felt a li- like a little bit much, like super heavy handed. At least that's how how I felt. Like I get it. And what yeah. purpose I, was that supposed to make us emotional or what? <laughs> I think the thing that was tough for me is like how much time has passed since he became the operator. I don't of think the spearhead said. group have they said or have they showed like anything in like her diary entries like that's what uh, i thought they I were think, gonna they do did, like, but uh, i don't remember like because he yeah i don't remember because I, th- I think it said yeah, he's, so he's about to finish his five-year term or something yeah i remember that fifth, and then he was asking him like yeah what are you gonna do you know once you get out and, he's and they say like, like, they're all like the same know. age I so i assume I think, assuming they're high schoolers so i assume he's probably yeah. like 18 or something so but it's more so just like i don't know how much time lena has spent with them so it's like i can't really get that towards i think okay because the so, first the first like um what was it like i think the first instance was either may 13th or may mm-hmm. something and now they're in june so okay it's only okay so month. that definitely helped because that that was me kind of trying to rationalize like the ending kind of chastising as taylor said of him just ripping into lena and saying like you know you act like you know you care about the 86 but you don't even know our names and so i was trying to figure out like okay how long has she had to even break that barrier down so i can totally see that from you know her saying all these idealistic things and then she doesn't even get to know them really from a personal standpoint so that 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 dig deep so that ending is supposed to be like like of course it's like you know just uh the people being oppressed like they obviously hate uh the alpha people and then also, attack on Lena's character, just how she's yep. naive. Just saying, like, you're you're not different. You're the same as all other, you know, uh, race of that sort. Or group. just like how, like I guess maybe she assumed like she could. It's just if she like worked hard and was super nice, like they accept her. And she, again, her her character being naive about not understanding how how we feel. So like I said, I guess it's trying to go with that angle. But I think I do agree with Taylor. It's a bit much, like because we, we get it as the audience. So so they're kind of leaning too much into that. Yeah, I like, I, like, I agree. Sorry, Trent, just really quick one second. I agree with how he feels. Like, I think he has every right to feel that way. I just feel that the writers writing it that way for us to digest as viewers, like you said, David, was just heavy handed, like the way they approached it. Sorry, go ahead, Trent. Well, I, the whole thing is that I kind of thought it was like bad where where they, they, they bring the whole thing about how, you know, when the guy's yelling at her, how, you know, she doesn't know their names. But at the same time, they like they've mentioned that she calls them or talks to them like every day. And you feel like at some point that should have been covered. <laughs> you think that, you know, some like because they, they show well, just social just like normal conversations. The way they um, say it, it's like it sounds like their peers handlers didn't really care much about them. So I guess they're bringing that like 
That's fair. That too. Uh, and but I mean, uh, yeah. I can't help but think though. It's like it's a two way street. Like yeah, yes, I that, know you're this group that's been yeah. oppressed upon. But it's like, hey, you never took the time. Like, obviously, Lena as an operator has shown that she cares about your aspirations and much more. Like, you could equally turn around and say, how come you never told me your name? How come yeah. you never had that confidence there? And and they could say, like, well, we've been oppressed for years and years. But at the end of the day, like, it's a two-way street. You I know, think that, it can't that, just that's... be, everything has to come from Lena. It's like, that's putting a lot on her as a character, admittedly. That's what, um, <laughs> that's like, like the, the one girl who died, Kirsch, whatever. Like, she was, like, sort of that, that way. Or first, she said, like, she doesn't like um she she knows that not not all the alphas are bad people and not all the eighty six are good. And she was saying mm-hmm. her, herself too, she was like some other like race within eighty six, so even then she felt discriminated there too. So she was supposed to be that character, it's just that she died, so I guess we didn't have someone to speak up for Lena, right? Yeah. I, I then... thought this episode could have meant more if it was later like later in the season. No, they just need to take out the first 10 minutes of the episode, and it would have been just fine. <laughs> and then, there you go, and then just add something else. like, Or maybe like the name part, like the, ne- the name of the next episode. How, how did you guys feel about the little like side scene with like Lena and um, Annette like searching through the archives to get like the map? I felt like that was completely just like... Yeah. Just added in to be like the plot convenience mm-hmm. of why, no, I was you okay know. With that. I was died. actually I was okay with that. Yeah. I, I was don't okay know. With that just, just because she was using that map um, later on. Like when she was like giving like the, the direction, yeah, order. but I feel like it's just there to add like more emotion between like Lena and Annette in like a friendly way. Like, yes, I get the end purpose of it is to provide them with more updated materials, but right. I don't know. I feel like it's it was there to kind of try to build that kind of relationship more, but I felt like it wasn't necessary. I, I only took away just like it just made it seem like Lena's more really focused on work because Annette was trying to talk more about personal stuff while like her like marriage. Months, and just Lena just completely ignored it and just like focus on work. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it focused that she cares about the eighty six, and then obviously because it didn't happen quick enough, you know, it, it led to the, the they kind did, of they did bring up the map did, later, but... like saying, "Oh, if only I found this earlier, I could have saved." Yeah, yeah. So I get that there, but uh, if if anything, I, I feel know. like this episode was just to highlight how naive like Lena was, right? Like, she's always talking all this stuff about how, you know, these guys, they're people, they deserve our help, we shouldn't treat them this way, yada, yada. Uh, but at the end of the day, she doesn't really take it that seriously, right? Like, she's hanging out for a friend in a safe zone, she's clumsily looking for a map, you know, they find it. And then, you know, this is, like, super important information that you should be giving out your units, but now she thinks about it, and then she's not, like, rushing to find this information to give to her units, she's just kind of, like, nonchalantly getting it. And then, um, like, the conversation that she had with uh, the girl that died, I think, Kaye or whatever it was. Kirsch, like, yeah. Yeah, she even mentioned it, too. Like, like I, when she said virgin, she meant, like, naive, I'm assuming. Naive, right? yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it really just hammers that point home that, you know, this girl, she's trying to play army, but she doesn't really understand how harsh it is out here, outside the walls. And then, hopefully, with the ending scene, that's meant to, like, break that, like, uh, like break that wall let lena like see how the world truly is and hopefully she grows from this okay and see, now, with, with, with this kind of episode they gotta take out that fan service in the first 10 minutes and i think this would have been a lot more impactful okay when you mention like that ku it makes much more sense now like so i'm hoping that like later on i can look back and see okay this is the part where she like she did break away from that naive like state of mind so that's that's what we mm-hmm. should have like walked away with is like that feeling that like ku was saying but it just didn't mm-hmm. feel like that, so I guess it could have been done there, this episode. Yeah, one like one point to actually back up, um, to back to, to back her up was actually with the the whole map and how the the whole shipments like the 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 it sounds like she is is wanting to get that information to them, mm-hmm. but it's like who the hell is actually the ones who who get that information to them? That's true. It could be and, a supply assu- chain issue. Yeah. Of getting and assuming it there. how racist like you know these people are, I'm assuming they're gonna take their sweet ass time getting it to them. That's right. Good. Just yeah. like how, like how but I would say that. Point. I think uh, it's just more of like, like Lena. Like just because she's better than like a lot of the ha- previous handlers doesn't mean that like she doesn't mean she's up to the standard of like of the yeah, knowing how, what war is actually like. So more yeah. again, more of that. Exactly like could be said, you can be great at test taking and all these things, but until you put it into actual real world practice, it means nothing. Yeah, yeah. basically. All right. 
I mean, I, yeah. I'm still gonna continue watching the show. I'm sure it gets oh, yeah. better. I'm hoping oh, yeah. like Before. next week, we, uh, something more, more of the action scene, more of the lore. Like, I'm sure we will get back to our boy think... Shin and his action scenes because he has. Such a... I don't think any involvement in this episode besides like maybe one line at yeah. the end when he's just like, "All right, we're going out." <laughs> so, yeah, one more question, quick to you guys: Does this count as the beach episode? Are we past this now? Let's hope so. I hope. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> I no. mean, they look they look all right, but you know, like. <laughs> That's not what I'm here for. Right. You know what I mean? okay. All right, all right. Yeah. So again, I'm still a fanboy for the show. Like I'm just one of the expectations because oh, it's like oh. one of my favorite types of like anime. So. Well, oh, nope. Yep. So that'll be it for 86. Move on to our next show. Talk about two year eternity. Thank God. Thank God she did not die. Uh, yeah. I'm about to, yeah. I'm about to yeah. turn it off. Hey, no. yeah. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Shut your dirty mouth. No, yeah. But right. I was so glad she didn't die. You have a couple of things that just make you worry. Okay, so the whole thing is basically how she wants to grow up and become a mom. That's so right. the, the part that kind of triggered like the death flag for me is when it was basically she was taking care of our MC throwing stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then she's talking about how, you know, basically she's like the mom in this. And immediately I thought like she's dead. I I I I think she's uh I don't think she's gonna make it past next episode. At the end, by the end of it, I agree. What, if, she, if she dies next episode, I'm quitting the show. Oh my oh god! My god. I'm quitting the show. I believe. Wow. I believe in plot yeah, armor. Right? The MC will see. To be see fair, I, I think she'll have more episodes than next episode. So I'll give I'll give Koo kind of credit and faith there. But in terms of her living the entirety of the series. No shot, my man. <laughs> I think I she's have annoying, so I don't care either way. <laughs> right, oh, girl, Taylor, you used right. to be like her. <laughs> I did not used to be like her. <laughs> you used to be a little wow. girl. What happened? <laughs> yeah, physically, I was like her at some point, but uh... cool. <laughs> I don't think we had the uh, the village, you know, environment aspect and being right. sacrificed to a you know <laughs> deity fair. of sorts. <laughs> like, I would have more faith in her living if the MC wasn't like a zombie like if he actually like mm. you know did stuff yeah <laughs> i guess just, if you know he wasn't kind of there, right? if he wasn't some spirit thing that turned to a rock to a wolf and then to a human <laughs> yeah, without understanding that fair. That so, fair. Yeah. So, so that's what i will just, say from the, from this episode is that i enjoyed the first half of the episode where we get to see um you know joe on in his human form traveling across the lands he's died on multiple occasions because <laughs> he has no concept of feeding himself and all these are dangers you know he just straight walks off cliffs <laughs> um so i i enjoyed that because it's very fitting to like this alien-esque entity that is mm-hmm. just learning it's essentially a toddler at this point um and the introduction of march and everything i think is really well done you know it gives insight into you know what other shows have done before where you know you have these villages and they have these traditions of many many years and how you can never go against them and you know i i do feel greatly for mark because of you know what she wants to aspire to and she just gets you know uh, a bad hand unfortunately yeah. that, that puts her into these events um but then towards the second half you know when she finally stumbles across joan and he's in his zombie form and, and reanimates um i That's was a little crazy. surprised that <laughs> I knew Mark was kind of scared shitless, but the fact that she still just stayed there regardless to let him like reanimate and do his thing. Um, and then the whole scene where, you know, he's, they're feeding him fruit and stuff like a dog, like, okay, yeah, I get that again of like, he's learning, but I felt like it was, it was dragged out like way longer than I felt it it needed to be. Um, so I think for me, I'm interested to see how quickly Joanne as a human will evolve. Is he going to evolve just because of, what mark is teaching him or is he going to get obviously drawn into like this whole ritual tradition and and in that way he kind of learns different human aspects um i just don't really know because the only other character we really get some insight into is the the sister figure that was Mm. trying to save mark um and i don't think she's gonna make it no shot she's probably gonna get taken out as well but I like how I we're, just, we're just, we just think everybody's gonna die in this show just because <laughs> pretty pretty wow. much. I don't think it's a happy story. It's just this being with no feelings that's gonna develop feelings. But uh, hey, what's the cost of developing those feelings? Hey, what everybody it, dies. What it costs you. The, exactly. the very little faith we have in this silent voice got to have any kind of happy ending. <laughs> silent voice, I only said March. Sure. Um, I only believe in March. Okay, if anyone yeah. else dies, it's this fine. was it's okay. this was the first uh, the first episode with an opening. So like 
it was so weird how like, we had so many characters in the opening, and then I guess people have powers, like some someone's casting magic in the opening. So it's like yeah, this is way more supernatural than I thought it'd be. So I kind of I kind of don't... don't like that they showed a ton of stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, yeah, but so, we do have twenty episodes this season. Is it twenty? It is oh, twenty. Shit. I didn't I didn't really know know that. Yeah. Yep. So we have we have a decent amount of time to see some characters. But so, and I'm, I'm sure kinda, you know we'll see how much how fast they burn through them. <laughs> like I'm kind of worried about like the power. Yeah, what they show in the opening. Like it's kind of not what I expected from the show. And I don't know. I'm kind of worried about the, that direction. So I kind of want to be more like simple. Just like just have you know just Joan just exploring the world. It sounds like they're gonna go more way more into like other characters having more where i felt like i, I really feel like it, it was more of a solo show joanna thing like really good i don't know yeah i feel I, like with the opening uh as it is it's going to go in a completely different direction than what we wanted to be honest um there's there's no way in hell it's going to continue with the pacing that episode one gave it in a yeah sense. the thing is i don't even really know what i want from this show like it's just like i don't know what to expect I, I know. Uh, I know. Taylor mentioned before that this is shows like eating at her. Like she just wants to read it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like it, and I mean, I don't like wh- when I looked it up and like read what people had liked about the series. I, I really didn't see any spoilers. People that were talking about it really didn't share any spoilers at all. They just basically said like that feeling that you get from like the first episode you know is the type of feeling to expect from the show like that real like human drama kind of thing um t- mm. telling human stories so i even though i know what you're talking about from the opening of like magic and stuff like that but i don't think like i don't think this is going to be like a re zero type of thing or like any of those other shows where it gets really intense with those types of elements i think they exist maybe in the show but that they're more of like the back focus, almost kind of like that one show that we're watching this season, that Magic of the Saint is omnipotent thing, mm-hmm. where oh, magic yeah. does exist, but it's not like the focus by any means. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I could be wrong, but that's just a feeling that I got. And so I'm, I'm willing to be patient. I'm not really we'll scared. See. I've heard yeah. nothing but great things about it. So it sounds to me like if they adapt it exactly like the manga is, I mean, it sounds like it'll be great. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. See, I'm just, yeah, I was just very surprised at the opening. So I'll. Yep. Was this the first week with the opening? Yeah, yep. because yeah, the first, the first, the first episode <laughs> ended with Tada Hikaru, mm-hmm. and then they mm-hmm. used that for the opening, and then yep, you had yeah. a different ending song. So I don't, okay. I don't even remember the ending song. <laughs> I don't remember it either. Yeah, but that's, I think it's okay because fucking Tada Hikaru is owning it on the. <laughs> it's song. just instant. The ending song is just instrumental now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But, but remember though, this is at the time of this podcast, we've only seen two episodes. Yes. Yeah. So we're not very far at all. Yeah. And And mark my words. You said 20. We got a long way to go. (laughs) Jesus. If March dies, I'm done. Mark it right here. Oh my God. I I still really don't know what to expect. Like, even going in. We need (laughs) Kuna. Yeah. Yeah. See, before that. before that opening, I I thought she was going to die, but now it's like, now seeing all these characters, like, oh, we can actually have an expanded set of cast. So I I don't think she's going to die. We'll we'll see. I took it as David, like, she can die because there's so much more cast members that they can Oh, God. Oh, yeah. we'll, we will see. Okay, I didn't even think I didn't think anything of it until basically she she raised the death flag the how she wanted to be a mom and technically she's a mom right now. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Everything just went dead silent, so I think we're good. <laughs> That's a no, he... he texted us. He says, "Boo, more sheets to tie." <laughs> <laughs> this man, I am shocked <laughs> and appalled, sir. She's just a child. Actually, honestly, like I, I probably would tear up. I, I would prefer her to not die, just because I don't like emotional things. I'll tell you what: if she does die, I'm gonna come back for one more podcast. And I'm just gonna rant about why she did not deserve to die. But I will say that for that moment, okay? But I, that's but, all right. I got. Could, okay. Could we could just we would we may have to just do this then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Already then. Wow. <laughs> abuse. Abuse of mod privileges over here. <laughs> I was gonna say the power is strong with this one. I'm just kidding, Koo. Mm-hmm. I, 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 w- I would like to listen to the rant. We'll see. We'll see. Right. <laughs> so that'll be it for to your attorney. Hopefully, you don't have any any meltdowns, more more mob abuses going on here. Move on to our next show. Let's talk about Toka Revengers. So this was so uh, this, brought, this brought me back in. Okay. Uh, 
I'll yeah, say we're in this, was, <laughs> this one was such a huge improvement. <laughs> Bro, finally talk now, guys. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, this, this the, because the first yeah. episode was zero. Yeah, they had the first three episodes, so now it's like we've covered all through it, right? Oh. It finally makes sense. <laughs> Oh god! It's kind of funny. We were watching this episode, and I was looking through the. Ca- I was just like looking at the page of it on my anime list, and I saw the dude with the blonde hair and the tattoo, and I looked at Threat, and I was like, "Man, I'm excited for this guy to show up. Like, what's gonna happen? He looks cool." And then, like, literally the next second, he walked on screen, and the show got better with Wait. everything that happened after that. And I was like, "Called it." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you missed one step. You see, you were talking about how you were waiting for this guy, and then you said, "I'm gonna. All right, I'm just gonna drop this show." And then right after you said that, he showed up. Wow. I was going to apart to avoid getting yelled at by Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, hold my beer, lady. I'm about to <laughs> rock your world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but the only part I got really worried about, because I don't know if you guys remember last week, I said, like, I swear to God, if this show, if this episode opens up with this man getting his ass beat, I was oh, like, I don't know what I was going to do. I have been opening the tongue so <laughs> hard. But I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, friend's friend's probably going to drop this. Like, I, I can't this. We were like, so, yeah. like, done with the with this like, show. Like, the first dude. 10 minutes, where they're yeah. just, like, trash talking this show. Dude, so wow. Last week, I, just, I want to say it. No, someone's like, yeah, bro, you I should know better. My, I see my word means nothing when I said, wait. Wait, <laughs> wait over the slow burn, please. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Wow! Oh, I, realize, okay. I need ten episode minimums. Wait, okay. Oh let's be, let's be realistic. Oh God, ten. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just I, yeah, I forgot about the discussion last week. I didn't realize you're that you guys are that close to dropping it because I I was gonna yeah, I was gonna keep waiting. Oh, I wasn't was, gonna drop it. No, no, okay. it was just red. No, I, but, I I said like I would trust. Uh, I I believe in Justin, and I said like yeah. I will I will go through this show even though it was a rocky start for the second the second episode, and of course this episode opened up with this man just getting his ass beat. And I was like, oh my god. And then we had but but then it it improved very quick right after that though. He still got his ass beat, by the way. Just oh he did. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that was still a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this... yeah. But it felt more meaning like there was more meaning behind it just because things actually happened. Uh and yeah. to be fair though, that 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 uh that the leader that showed up, I thought was the same guy as like their friend in their group because he looks he does exactly look similar he looks yeah, yeah because they're both like they're both short have a like, kind of the same yeah. haircut so yeah, I didn't, long, yeah, like, sure. shoulder shoulder length hair yeah yes yeah, so we were very confused i was like wait did this guy just like grab his cape he and just come back 180 was like yo guys i've been the secret leader this whole time just like, actually, yeah i've actually been a badass this entire time <laughs> I gotta say, I gotta say that that I freaking loved Hina after this episode. Like, I don't think I've ever like my opinion of a, a character has skyrocketed so fast before. But she just walked up to him and slapped him across the face. I was like, what a fucking badass! I loved her in that moment. Is, isn't she Bay? Oh god, she's Bay. She wears man. the pants in the in the relationship for sure. She is uh, she's she a badass loves. through and through. And so, like, I never just, had an issue with her, but I just loved her after that. And this like, guy just ban her after middle school. Uh, yeah, what a loser. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Man, this is the best wife we can get. What the hell are you doing? So, oh I mean, I did receive a comment from Sasha. He said, Good. I was going to get ready to, ready to cut you up your voodoo doll with my machete. You say anything, Raga will cut you. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So that's, those are basically the messages I received from him. So he's okay with. Uh, yeah. You he, guys dropped the show. I'm dropping you through the roof and using it to <laughs> an Uzi on your point blank. Like I said, yeah. I was never planning on dropping the show because I believe in Justin's word. Mm-hmm. So, uh-huh. yes. that's, I'm sorry. I, believe, I, I, believe, I, believe in Justin who believes in you. No, it's okay. Taylor's the one that was. About- now, if we get to a point and then it's just like, I'm going to drop it again, then I'm going to be like, oh my God. Fuck, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm committed. I will no. say, I've already oh, dropped Rashido um, no Oto, so we're good. <laughs> I like where this episode actually went, like where Stop. it's actually going. Sorry, Kua, I apologize. Yeah. I'm done. I can only do so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, but no, it's I actually really like how this one went. It's uh I think we can definitely can I feel I can definitely feel like that guy the dude with the glasses was definitely behind of like what happened. Uh-huh. Of like the norm of uh the the I mean tr- future yeah, events. Well, that's what it seems right. like so far, but we never know. So I yeah. feel like oh, like, that guy seems hella hella uh, yeah, evil. But he, that guy, yeah, but he's got the like, you like little like gang, like you know, designs on the side yeah, of his yeah, hair and trying, super it's menacing so, it's smile. So early in the series, like I feel like there could be some sort of like twist later or something else happening. Like it feels too early to judge that kind of thing. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to tap into Ku's uh profitabilities and that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll see. You. Right. Like I said, there's there's a lot of material to uh to adapt. So. I'm more curious about the the the, the, the leader. God, I forgot his name. Like Sano, Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. But because I he's... just go by their nicknames. There ain't no way yeah. I'm ever remembering these guys. Yeah. <laughs> like original names. They all have nicknames. We're like, <laughs> all right. It sounds like 
It's, it sounds Mike kinda... is the leader. He's the okay. shorter one yeah. that right. literally just dropped the guy with like the upper kick. <laughs> right. Like where it kind of reminds me, it's kind of giving me this Higurashi vibe where it's like, are you a time deeper too? Like when he says like, um, was it like something? Are you really how... twelve years old or whatever? Uh, did, oh yeah. Yeah. Are you really? And then, and also like he says to like something like, I was it. There, there's something I don't want everyone to give up, and that caught his attention too. So, I wonder how I... like. How that will, well, how that's gonna affect later, or yeah, I definitely feel like this Hina thing is def- is one of many many arcs to come because I don't know how in God's name you can milk this for two hundred something chapters. <laughs> like I feel like it's de- like things have definitely got to come up, things have definitely have to change. Like I, that's why I just feel like I I, I just um oh man like I, I I really don't know if it if it takes you like two hundred something chapters to basically just tell Hina you you know. Don't show up at this stay, festival. Stay, stay indoors. <laughs> yeah, just stay indoors. Uh, I, I definitely feel like there's got to be a lot of other things that happen. Like I said, Maybe. Uh, the tip I, of I, the I iceberg think... has, has just been touched upon. We got a, <sighs> yeah, a so big I'm, mass I'm, to, I'm, the other to get down. The big thing I'd be wondering is just, like, just how much of the time traveling we're going to do. Because like, they say that conditioning, it's like you can only go 12 years back. So I wonder if we're going to progress a lot in the ages of these characters. Like if... like. Or if if I don't know if he like, goes back to the present and skips like a year or something and then comes back later like mm-hmm. when like they're like a, like was it the four, third year of middle school or first year of high school so mm. so I have a couple things about this that I was actually thinking about like what if the time changes depending on the person uh, what if uh, Hina's brother was just wrong <laughs> because there was only one he could there was, yeah. there was only one thing one example of this uh, situation. So I feel like it, like there's a couple unknowns that could be different, or that or it could be a possibility be, of being different, or depending on it, or, or it basically could be just depending on the person. Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if he could, uh, um, time jump with multiple that just different people depending. Like if there's something that's I guess. like what makes like what makes Hina's brother different from other people that allow him to time jump. You know. Yeah, I guess I just I just took him for his word. Yeah, because you just assume. When he says that, he's you assume he's like he's trying to like lay out like the logic of this world, but then again, like yeah, I'm just like taking him for his word, so we don't really know. So yep, mm-hmm. yep. There's always a possibility of being wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm curious, Ku, what are your thoughts? I mean, I know you've been having to sit here the last two podcasts waiting for everybody to catch up to the events of the special episode, but where where are you at with with the show so far? Uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where there's, like you said, there's so much information to go through. You just don't know what's going to happen next. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm guessing Does that, that make you next... fearful in terms of that regard of no, it's nice. Knowing... Yeah. Yeah. It's because then it'll give you something to look forward to. And okay. the fact that it's not predictable is always nice too. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure where it's going. I'm hoping Hina survives because as of right now, she is kind of like the best bay, right. Of the season. It's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, it, it just feels like any one of these guys could be the main culprit or the main reason why uh, the truck mm-hmm. ran into the festival, but you just don't know. Like, what I'm most confused about is uh, who was it that gave him these powers, right? Uh, because I, I personally, I don't think it was Hino's brother. I don't think it was Nato. I think it was actually someone else. Same. And mm. if anything, it could have been, like, because if you... Like, remember what I talked about with Vivi, right? Whenever you go back and pass, like, you do change something where it's not the same route anymore. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what happened here, too. Since he went to the past, he's going to change the future somehow as well. So there's going to be, like, slight altercations. And then, like, uh, what Nato is thinking about is not going to be true. Because since uh, uh, Takamichi always goes back, he's changing something. So the details are always going to change as well. Yeah. Minor so, I also feel like, yeah, like basically with Ku, how um, that it didn't start with him and his brother, but he just happened to stumble into the ability in a sense with right. with with him. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but I, but I'm with you, Ku. I actually want to know like where this kind of started, how it happened, and and the and such. I don't, awesome. I don't know. I don't know if they're ever gonna get to that logic because it feels like, it feels Not, like the main <laughs> the main so. focus is the it's just like the the character down just with like the gang and like in Hina. It seems like. V2 come we were just trying to explain like all the lot especially about how what we're giving in the beginning with like how just how arbitrary it just feels what like with how Nalto says it. I don't know if, if they're gonna ever explain that part. So yeah. 
No. Yeah, because what well, we we have like what twenty episodes with this one too twenty something. Oh no, uh, we don't. They have them. haven't confirmed it. They yeah, haven't confirmed have it yet. But okay. like I said, with how they're pacing from a manga chapter to anime episode conversion, I would assume twenty four. Uh, mm. But actually, this latest episode, uh, it wasn't a, a one to like one chapter to one episode. It was actually, I think, two, maybe three chapters. So they are mm. speeding up the condensement. But again, there wasn't really much happening in this. So it made sense that they could fit it into a, a single episode. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see. But um, no, I'm, I'm glad we're getting to this point where, you know, now you guys get to see just, again, the tip of the iceberg of this gang, Tomon, and a more diverse set of individuals and in, that's just gonna you know continue to grow exponentially here mm -hmm. um and i think the other thing that this show does really well is it has you know that level of mystery of you know kind of one the supernatural of time travel and again whether or not that's going to work out for it or not at the end of the day but um i really like the balance of just the seriousness involved with like a lot of the driving factors and you know, kind of what we'll see here but then also the comedy like i think this was a perfect right. episode with both draken and mikey when they literally just show up to takamichi school and they literally beat the shit out of all the <laughs> third years in the hallway and then you know they're literally doing like leapfrog off their backs just because you know there's such badass delinquents like it's those kind of things that really make the show great um yeah. where it just has that good balance of making you laugh but then also realizing like there's a lot of good personal motivations here for why they're part of this gang all right like i said i'm back in um i have one more one more last thing to kind of bring up that sasha actually kind of brought up a pretty good question what if the tokyo majin gang is responsible for time travel man. who knows man that, that could be wild and i'm just saying no <laughs> not even a possibility okay, i guess that, that's where <laughs> I'm going to yeah. shoot you down right there. I'm sorry. The only I... other thing I'm, I'm looking at what Sasha texted me was that, one, he he loved the episode, thought it was, you know, pure fire in his words, but he he loved uh, the scene with the red-haired kid from Takamichi's group when he's busting out the knife and literally getting ready to stab oh, yeah. this guy for Takamichi. He's just like, yo, man, like, I want that guy in my gang any day of the week. And I was just like, I couldn't help but chuckle at yeah. that. Um, because that was, like, the main kind of partial focus of, of that thing. But I feel like, that gets overshadowed very greatly by the introduction of Draken. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, uh, I was Mikey. I was already paying to yeah to uh, Akun. Yeah, I think that's the same. Like, cause, cause, like, yeah, cause mm -hmm. he's just like the leader of their group. So I had a feeling like he'd be um, doing more things there on. So yeah, yeah. And then the only other thing is like, um, I guess like just as much in the comedy, it's like I'm not really in it for the comedy. I didn't. I guess it's not really my type of comedy. I'm just here for like the other parts. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And I guess I sh I shouldn't have came off as like a, a split of comedy and seriousness. It it it's more so sprinkles in comedy in a very yeah. tasteful way, um, is what yeah. I should have said. So all right. that's all I really got. And yeah. uh, Sasha just said a few. <laughs> yep, so, 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 we're in it there. So Man, that's hater. For, for Tokyo Revengers. I'm the only prophet here. Okay, so, <laughs> there could only be one. That's very yeah. true. Let's so, keep it that no way. No one will take yeah, that title. <laughs> all right so that's gonna be it for tokyo avengers let's talk about my hero academia um yeah brian thoughts on this episode the 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 it was cool <laughs> <laughs> that's right and what's the school culture oh, yeah uh, i'm so, late on right now i'm not gonna lie okay I'll, I'll try to help out so i'm a little worried that this is gonna dr definitely drag out quite a bit that's right uh, I am with David now on this. <laughs> um, because I thought, like, where, right when this episode you, you, finished... You, you thought like, this going to be one episode, and then you realized, yeah. oh, no, there's part two coming next week? Yeah. I kept thinking, like, okay, like, because Hero Academia has done this before. We'll have, they'll have, like, a match, but it'll wrap it up. Like, they'll start and wrap it up in the same episode. We didn't get that this time. Like, it's... We, we basically just got a bunch of fucking mushrooms at the end. I'm thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> So, <laughs> to I be will... fair, though, I do appreciate the the emphasis that they're putting on my boy. You know, um, I will say, I will say too that I, I actually enjoyed yeah, it. So like, I I don't know. I just it, like I I was worried more worried last week, but I feel like this. I don't know. I really like that focus on on um, and also like I just thought the whole fight between the two edge lords. Like, I actually really enjoy that for some reason. Just like like the sh the shadow. Just the shadow being versus like the shadow guy goes in the shadow. I don't know, like so 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 edgy, but I loved it. 
So this yeah. has to be Johan's favorite episode, right? Because you get the two edge lords <laughs> meeting together. Yeah. Like it was destiny that we fought it against each other. Our like, fate to twine. Like, like get your ass to your corners, and then we'll start <laughs> to fight. You know. It was that oh, backstory too, where um, we're talking about when he was doing the internship with Hawks, and he was so yeah. pissed because he thought he, like Hawks was like wasting his time or looking down on him. Like I felt that too. Sure. So. So I'm much more like I'm much more higher in this episode than like the previous ones, but I wish it ended <laughs> just this battle. I didn't. I don't want them to go part two because we still have the other groups to go through. They did have team battles though, or, or like as like parts of the team battles, which I thought was actually pretty cool. The naval blaster guy had a useful has a, had a use, and also like the 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 invisible girl, her her, uh, her solar flare ability came in clutch again. Useless. I but like useless. her. She's cool. That's all she's done though so far. Like, I want to see what else she can do. We, we you know, see... you you know, that's a step up from just being an invisible person. You know, mm-hmm. invisible <laughs> person true. wearing gloves and boots. Yeah. All right. To be fair, what she did this episode, the naval guy did with him, like shower. Okay, so basically, <laughs> she didn't need to be in this group. All right. <laughs> to be fair, I think she's gonna come in the clutch and she's gonna win it for them though. I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> Also, guys, she's f right? Because as of right now, she's naked, but she's got mushrooms growing on her body. Dude, she is oh, yeah. like... Never mind, I forgot. Yeah, she's, she's, she's well, I, I, mean, I do I don't not mean... like that ability is just mushrooms. I just think it's actually stupid. I, I hate it. I'm assuming there's gotta be something more than just mushrooms, right? There's, there's like, gotta be so much, like, weird quirks in a show, and it's just, like, how Brian just, like, focuses on the mushroom as the one Listen, that, like, just breaks it. I just think the mushrooms are dumb, okay? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like, go go out on a farm, grow your mushrooms, and sell them. Okay, like <laughs> you have no use here. Uh, I I okay. feel like there's definitely got to be more of a use to these mushrooms than just uh you know, we like uh than just having them sprout everywhere. That just seems very lame. Um, but it, they could always go you know vile plume on this. You have you know paraly- you know was it a uh, paralyzed powder, sleep powder, poison powder? Come on. I basically just said the thing that was closest to a mushroom. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with you. The vile plume gang. Yeah, the uh, vile plume stuff. Like, there's got to be something yep. more to these mushrooms. Like, it's come on. That'd yeah, be very fun. very lame. But and there, but, never mind. But uh, I I really got nothing else. Focus point for me was uh was uh Tokiomi's backstory. Um, hopefully this fight. Uh, wraps up next episode. If it goes, like, if it goes for another episode, I don't know what I'm gonna think about this season. I mean, the only time I would accept it is because it's focused on Togiyami because I feel like he's gotten the short end of the stick since yeah. season one. You know, yeah, yep. he was the one that got a badass internship with Hawks, who was a number two hero. They never really like, uh, you know, like explain it even further. And then even with the last two episodes, he was kind of like useless in a sense, where he didn't really shine. And uh, like, unless you count the movie where he was kind of badass too, but um, that's that wasn't canon. Right. Yeah, this is the first time where he's actually like had the ability to like showcase his abilities, and yeah. I think for his character and his skill set, like he deserves more than what he's been given so far. And his quirk is so cool, right? You know, but maybe I'm just an Edge Lord fanboy. I don't know. Maybe Same. That's just what it is. Well, I dude, mean, that, that, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, with you because oh, yeah. I totally agree with you. So yeah, mm. Tokiyami's awesome. The other guy is just. Fucking terrible. <laughs> I don't know. But the way this guy looks is just a creep. Like I wouldn't even call him an edge lord, man. I think he's just a creep. Uh yeah, I guess. But yeah, hopefully they don't keep this up because this would be really disappointing. This was like season five. Just just I like, how, I like how that, that one dude's target was the naval guy. And where he's just like, haha, you thought like my target was a Tokiyami guy. It was actually the naval blaster guy. I was like, why would it be him? Of I all think, people on that fucking team, why would it be him? I think it was just because you can clearly point him out as one of the weaker links of the group. So it's like, you, ignore the guy. you know, just ignore him. <laughs> I mean, the goal of the game is just to capture them. So <sighs> how many, how many did they have to capture? Was it two or three? All it's of them? The majority, right? At the end yeah, of the time. It's majority. Oh, oh it's, okay. I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah. There's a time limit. And I think it's like majority at the end or all of them at the end. So yep. yeah. Yeah. Honestly, but that's all I really have. Yao Yozru, I can't really, really pronounce her name. It sounds like her episode's next, or her time to shine is next week. Mm. I'm actually mm-hmm. curious. Um, I I curious about Kendo because I like her character. So they yeah. do best with her. Wanna see. Yeah, I actually want to know more about her than actually she's like, she's like, like the, know, one, the one. The one character I'm interested from Class B. 
He's like, I yeah. mean, I do, I do like the president because he's oh, so funny. You? But like, are you now? Like, <laughs> yeah. she's clearly, she's clearly like the strongest one in that group. So, but I do love You're the like president. Man. How he's, he he talks so much smack against Class A. <laughs> uh-huh. so. Dude, that, that guy's just fucking annoying. That guy's so terrible. I, I think he's pretty funny. Like, he just, he talks so much funny smack. too. <laughs> I'm interested to see like how he changed his quirk because before all I had to do was touch him. So I'm wondering what's uh. What nah, he's improved. I, I, I just want to see more on screen, just talking smack and then just losing to class BA after that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, more of the comedy relief. I'll take it. The, the one thing I'll say I enjoyed from this episode, and not that it, you know, broke the molds in any ways, was this one. All the teams were trying to strategize with each other. And then you have Bakugo just being like, <laughs> shut up. I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> so. Just typical Bakugo. No, oh, I enjoyed and, that for that one, but it's definitely in, moving slowly. In Japanese, he said, the Bakugo, he says, Ore-sama, which is like a really like arrogant, narcissist way to describe oh, yourself. It's so, him perfectly. Yeah. See, this is why I need, you, I need these, these lower backgrounds and cultural yeah, cause, backgrounds. Because like, because you don't, you don't say like, you don't say honorifics when referring to yourself, like San or Sama. And so, mm-hmm. and so like, it's, Ore-sama is like, it's like a type of like, um, kind of like, like a gag in Japanese, like where like where if like you put on characters who are really narcissistic. So that's, ah, that's part well of like the, the lost translation part right there. So got it. Respect for Bakugo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very fitting of him. Just because you like bullies, Ren. The not bully. I like the ang- I like the anger part he, of him. He likes, he... <laughs> <laughs> he likes bullies. He talks to people. I, uh, oh, don't the worry. Bully. Tokyo Revengers got bullies. The bully. <laughs> Gangsters galore. Dude, Bakugo just needs to start up his own like little uh his own YouTube page basically where he's like a how just the, the comedy is where he's just a, driving. Just nah, he, it's just, like, later on life where he gets like a driver's license, he's just driving through uh traffic and just watch this man rage. Uh, it just needs to be a Twitch I'm streamer. Sure he would just blow up. Play, he would just blow yeah, up the other drivers. Have all the other <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. It's just, you know, I'm just, I'm just interested in what he does. You know, Dred uh, sent a letter literally to the creator and asked for this as a spinoff. Dred literally just said, I want to see myself animated. But that's Basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't hey, know man, what you're talking about, That can happen for a you price. Have, <laughs> you have no proof. <laughs> no, you have too much for that, Oh, Anyway, uh, I think I, I'm good there. Yeah, I just want to say for yeah. Poo, for, I, I, um, was it? I don't think it's, this is gonna be a whole season five, but yeah, just again as I've been saying in the beginning, that's why that's why I shred, I want the school stuff to move along. But you're getting your team battles that you want it though. Oh, that is yeah. the one cool uh, thing about this. Yeah, this I don't, but I really I need I need a story to focus on so. Right. And then the problem is, right, like with each group, they each group has like an important character as well, right? Like you got Bakugo's group, you know, there's Bakugo's time to shine, right? Yeah. And then you got, you know, you even got, uh, what was it, the, the, the team leader guy. Uh, Ida? Yeah, Ida, right? You know, he has time to shine as well. You got, you know, Todoroki, he's time to shine. And then, you, of course, you got to have like Deku and uh, Shinso uh, time as well. So the, the it's, it's, oh. it's, it's rough, man. I feel like this might be the majority, if not all of season five. With the way I think it'll be a big it. part of it. Just, you know? yeah. A reminder, this is a shonen. It's just like how much like slower this moves yeah. compared to the other shows. <laughs> The thing is, I'm honestly, I'm fine with this though. But I want, it, but I would like it to be just wrapped up in each episode. Like, just give them, you know, just yeah. split it up yeah. where they have one episode. We don't need like this double episode stuff because it's just, it's, with, especially with like, I don't want to call them minor characters, but technically minor, minor characters. Minor characters. Yeah. <laughs> so, cast is a nicer word. Yeah, so. like I, definitely... I'd, I'd like the support cast, like uh, where they're actually getting like time to shine. Like, I'm fine with that. But two episodes is too much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Justin. Go, go no, ahead. We're, we're definitely getting better. I just couldn't help but think with like you know the multi episode fight focuses. I just think of the worst case scenario of like Dragon Ball Z, for example. But obviously, oh, hopefully, it'll uh, never get uh, back to those days nah. of like eight episodes fighting one person. But uh, I, God, I totally that's get it. Horrible. There's, oh, there's no Dragon Ball Z. If you try to go back, you better go back with some rose tinted glasses or just watch it was, the highlights. It was, it was good at the time. Okay, I don't know what happened. Hell Maybe. yeah! As a kid, you think as a kid, you, you have more free time, and you're just like, yeah, this is my shit. You know, I go to school, I come home, I have my tendies, and then I watch Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> See, that, it's, that's, it's simpler times. That's I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe nothing has changed. Like, I go to work now. I eat my tendies, and then I watch anime. So, 
Man, maybe there I never go. grew up. There you go, Stratton. Justin. Justin says ten days. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I actually asked about that, but but, but Justin Koo, that you know, the, like things have changed from like back in our day. Like this is too many Zoomers now. That's true. Whoa, easy there. Uh, uh, <laughs> ooh, we don't want to use that word here. Yeah, so yo, shit right. was okay, shit was right. not lit, yo. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm done. We're done oh, with the man. chicken tendies and lit. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Done. No more. But we're gonna end oh, there. For, I think we're oh, done here. Shit. Yeah. So thanks for that. <laughs> that'll be it for here Academia, and oh. that's basically all we have for our main show. So if anyone wants to do any shoutouts, feel free. Honestly, just one shout out with just the uh, next gen fall dive. Oh my god, it's so <laughs> good, dude. It's, it's pretty solid. I won't lie. So it's pretty good. solid. It's my show where I feel like I can comfortably turn my brain off and just enjoy yeah. the, the greatness of it. So Yeah, like uh, I, like I'm gonna be with the MC. Like when that little prompt came up, I'm like, do it, do it. Don't you dare hit no. And Get then the fuck out of here. <laughs> and then he hit yes, and I'm like, okay, we may have made a bit may, made a bad mistake here, sir. <laughs> we need mm. to back the fuck out. And then now you have to like think before. about now you have to think about like what the hell is gonna happen in the next episode that drives this guy to come back, right? Because after yeah. shit like that happens, I would yeah. never. Go I was gonna back. say, I feel like the no. series could just end at that point where he's just right like, oh, there. Fuck this, I'm out. Um, if it was my, if it was my series, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way I'm uh, coming back. I'll give a quick shout out to uh, the Saints' power is omnipotent. I think it's continuing to do what it does well. It's very cute. It, it, it doesn't have a ton of substance. I know Taylor, you're saying I'm only there for the green haired scientist. I completely am fine with that. One haired guy hey. is so creepy. He's like buying her stuff like he's trying to own her. Like it's so creepy. Hey, that's how you courted girls back in the day, all right? Damn. This really? man, yeah, is very chivalrous, all right? He received a gift back and got on his knee and, you know, very princely kissed her on the hand and dude i don't he, know he he is, just, it's kind of creepy he definitely he definitely why. has something that we haven't learned yet he's too much of a a prince charming character yeah where i feel like he is gonna have that like darker side maybe i was just like because even the the one friend in the library is like oh you're dating like the the ice prince or whatever so mm -hmm. obviously he's got some he's got some uh some skeletons in the closet that maybe yeah. we'll get to see yeah. so, yeah. it's another show that's very comfy for me to turn my brain off and just enjoy it. <laughs> um, so so that's that was one thing for me. And then the other one, uh, it's not really a shout out, but more of a, a disappointment, I think, is Mars Red. Um, the latest episode. Don't say really that, man. Do... I still want to watch it. But... <laughs> I, know, I was just going to ask if you had watched any of it yet. Um, I'll be a rat. I don't know, man. It's just... <sighs> it's, it's, again, it's... I, the I really like that. And the that music time. is fine, but the story, man... Uh... Cause like ah, uh, cause you don't get we don't get that time period in Japan that often. So I was hoping like it's gonna be one For of the good ones. Reason. That, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Since this didn't do well, David, what you can do is I don't know if you're a big fan of the Phoenix Wright series, but they just announced that they're gonna be doing you know that one spinoff of um the like his same ancestor? time period in yeah his ancestor. Yep. Oh, the great. So detective. maybe maybe yeah. that'll fill. Yeah. <laughs> fill this Dude, hole. I doesn't I, 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 I doesn't Mars London right? though, or is that still in Japan? It's Japan. Yeah, it's the but it later gets yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. blood and stuff. So they just announced the what is it? Two of them? Oh, as a combined okay. back? Or is yeah. there, is there three? Uh, because I this was, was the third one. Yeah, it was. It was two 3DS games that never made outside of Japan. So they're just porting mm -hmm. over and bringing it over here. But oh, actually, just I, two, I, just I, just, I just realized why I made the confusion is because yeah, the original game they're in Japan, but the English version they're going with the same like English stuff. So his answer is mm -hmm. the same. It's called Herlock Sholmes or whatever. Ah, uh, okay. English stuff. So that's why. That's, <laughs> Again, it's it's like it's like what was it like it's like how what, uh, Japanese Maya... people what they imagine is gonna you know, it's because it's the localization. It's, also, it's like when Maya says, "I love cheat the hamburgers." Oh, it's yeah, that yeah. Like, yeah. But... I, was gonna, I was gonna say the Mars Red. Uh, don't they have like uh, an opening by uh, opening or ending by flow, and then they oh. have like uh, yeah, they the have things like, by other... Hide or Hide. Yeah, the, the attack yeah, on Titan. The, yeah, they have oh, a the it's, it's what guys, I'm saying. Yeah. The music in the art and to probably your benefit david the setting is it's all fine but the substance of the story is just ah uh, it feels like I it's all better, been done before I, all right better or worse than noblesse which is the other vampire one oh, that better i better than noblesse is 
some, <laughs> some garbage. Ooh. I don't know how. Ooh. Because Noble S triggered me so bad. I hated that show so much that when I saw there was another vampire show coming out, I was like, fuck that show. I watched, <laughs> I yeah, I watched, I watched the specials that came out first, and I was like, oh, okay, I could see potential. And then when they did the whole like reboot with Crunchyroll and everything, I was just like, nah. Wait, wasn't it? Well, I was talking about reboots. Or not a reboot, but the continuation. Sorry, yeah. The special was technically a prequel, but yeah, yeah. Thank they didn't you. save the show. Keep, so. me, keep me in the right place. <laughs> yeah. But if, if there are anybody, if there are no other shout outs, I think we should at least give like the these last ten minutes for uh, David Bryan to give their thoughts on the Demon Slayer movie. Oh, and we'll train. just say spoilers here, so just in case if anybody's uh, got to this point, you have not seen the movie. So, oh, just just so what, what we took what we took two hours to discuss on Friday. You guys only get ten minutes. So <laughs> well, we're doing ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> roughly, roughly ten minutes. Okay, I'm if, if it needs to be longer, it's fine. Whatever we'll, you feel is. We'll let it go. Okay. I didn't we'll even let it go. I do this thing, but okay. So huge spoilers. Huge spoilers. So if you haven't seen Demon Slayers, click, do click not right now. Get out of here. Leave. Leave. Farewell. Go watch a movie. Be sure to follow before you leave. That would be really. good. Great comment. No, just videos, leave. As just always, leave. we love just to leave. Okay. Don't listen to <laughs> this man. Oh, which way is he? This way? Yeah. <laughs> but no, okay. yeah. For those people, thank you for listening to this point. Like, you know, liking, disliking, subscribing. Okay. Follow us. You know, all of a sudden, same such. Anyway, we'll move on. Demon um, Slayer time. <laughs> yes. I guess Brian go first. So I'm curious what he thinks. Uh, you are, I mean, I have like a sticky note with like 20 notes. So. Go for it. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, Let's we get it. it. I'll take it like any questions you guys have like in particular too. Um, overall, ten out of ten. Uh, animation was great. Nice music yeah. was amazing. <laughs> I enjoy this so much. Um, there's like a few nitpicks I could go off of, but um, CGI tentacles. Eh, that kind of. Um, oh. I think the the biggest one because I got through like an hour fifteen of as this podcast. Um. I pretty much agree with like pretty much everything that you guys said. Um, for me, in the beginning, uh, I thought the um, uh, what was the main person's name? The the dream person, his name. Enmu. Yeah, Enmu. I thought mm-hmm. his like dream power was like really cool and unique. Yeah. Like Genjutsu type of stuff. Um, but once I got to like the train fusion part, I was like, I right, I'm out. This is not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my thing, dude. Like I don't know what it is, but I was like, yeah. Dude, he, was feeling, he was feeling himself a little too much when he merged with that. Train. Yeah, I was like, yikes, man. But, uh, when he did, when he did fuse into the train, though, your thoughts on when uh, the, uh, Tandro's way of countering the dream state? Do it. That man <laughs> has like the mental capacity of a god. Like, <laughs> could you imagine like going through with it, knowing maybe if it was a dream or not? I'm like, dude, that's kind of. That's kind of sus, man. I don't want to die. <laughs> Just straight laugh yeah. off your head. I was like, holy, that's some dark stuff right there. I was like, well, then, well, And then going from that, then your uh, your boy, Yunosuke, got a lot of airtime this movie. Hell yeah! <laughs> I love that shit. Dude, Just give me more. I keep, Save I, keep forgetting, ass too. I keep forgetting that Yunosuke is Kirito's voice actor. Because like... Listen, so don't good. ruin it, David. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, just stop. Because like, I never, I never feel it whenever I hear you know, Skay, But then like, but then it just comes familiar. I'm like, where have I heard this voice before? Why is it? <laughs> and then yeah, I love that like guy's voice though. He's Damn, so good. You guys good. are remembering too many voices. <laughs> yeah, like dude, Kirito's voice I, is so I, I good. I looked it up because it felt so familiar, right? and that's when I re- saw it was Kirito. So yeah, but yeah, yeah. um, I was, I, I was like going back to to Brian's point. Um, yeah. My only real complaint it was yeah, the CGI with the like the tentacles like that was like the, the only part of the CGI that bothered me like because it just felt like it felt way too 3D compared to everything else. Whereas like the train like by itself was really good. It felt in the background, but then like once like mm-hmm. the fleshy stuff started just coming out, like I, I that's the only thing I didn't like. Right. And then was, did anyone else have that complaint? It was just that just me? Like I was curious. Oh, I think all of us had that yeah, complaint. Right okay. complain. I, yeah. I was honestly fine with it. It's like there's only so much you can do with CG yeah. at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But I think I really liked your point, uh, David, that you mentioned of like the CG of the train. And even like the C, C- I feel like there was a little tinge of CG with like even the opening scene when they're like showing like this vast well, force and stuff and the... leading to like the oh, yeah. out of yeah. the train. Like that was very well done. Yeah. And they kind of CG... do that with like the snow as well. 
The CG mm-hmm. of the train was good. Yeah, the snow was good. The um, like like the water and the fire stuff was like CG was really good too. But it's just like the fleshy stuff was like the only thing that stood out <laughs> because I, yeah. especially because everything else was so good. That's why it <laughs> felt more so. It uh-huh. feels like the the CG. Well, Sasha equated it to the CG that he saw in the Power Rangers movie with Ivan Ooze. But I more so think of it like uh, from the Resident <laughs> Evil series when you have like, yeah, like that's what I was thinking too, like the games. fleshy like, stuff. That's what yeah. I think of. Yeah, like of that fleshy material. So yeah, yeah. Brian, your next point. Uh, where is it? I like I like it when they showed like everyone's like little dream, like their peaceful dreams. <laughs> like, what was your favorite dream? Oh, dude, Anoskis was hilarious. Yeah, man. I'll say, I'll I was say, dying the entire time. That's the thing time. I was to bring up too. Like the comedy was so on point for this movie. Like yeah. I forgot how I missed the comedy Demon Slayer. I forgot how funny yeah. the show was. Like the comedy, yeah. like just like like it just got me so hard. Like, like especially with Anoske, he was like so good in this in this movie for the comedy. Like especially like the the gag of like how he thought like the train was like the Lord of the Land. And then it turns out like he's using the demons. Yeah, like he's like, I was like, oh, a lot right. bitches. His man's on point. That beast scent, baby. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that was that was one of the best parts. Was, like, and the, then also, well, yeah, well, yeah, uh, that was like so so good when it happened. I also agree with Ku though. Like Zenitsu's was fucking hilarious as well. Um, when he just basically comes up and just starts doing shumpo with a giant pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah, he's just yeah. like, what is a man? Are you my dream? Nezuko, Nezuko only. Yeah. yeah, like um, he knew he was dreaming. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> what, uh, Brian and David? What did you guys think of Rengoku in terms of his kind of initial showing in this movie? Because I know, you know, as anime only is before this, you only really saw him at the meeting of the Hashiras. So, yeah. well, we're... the thing is, like, I forget, like, we barely met the Hashiras besides like Tomioka and Shinobu. So it's like it's hard to remember all of them. Like, I don't know like mm-hmm. any of the Hashiras, and then. I only knew about Rengoku because I knew he was in the next arc, so like that's my only, my only thing. So I mean, so the, the intro, it's like I didn't really think much about him just because like I barely knew him. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you were you vibing with his very like positive and uh, upfront kind of ideologies? And, and and Taylor kind of perfectly nailed it where she said it, it, he gave real all might vibes. I mean, I didn't would, really would think you agree much with that? Just like. I just thought he was, he looked cool and like he's very positive. So I just, yeah, I didn't really think much of him when he was introduced in the train, honestly. I love positive characters. What, uh, what about you, Brian? That's so monotone, David. You go all out, all might, man. I fucks with it 100%, man. I like that shit. On a stack, no cap. <laughs> exactly. Bring in the Zoomers, man. Bring them all in. See, yeah. see that, don't don't ask how I know of his Zoomer talk, all right? See, that, that kind of, yeah, that's that's for Brian and, and Stratton. Like, they can enjoy that. I thought he was fine, yeah. So I just need um, more. Yeah. I wish there was uh, more of him, yeah. Yeah, my only issue coming into this was um, uh, later on, like, his, his last scenes, those hit hard, but I feel like they could have hit way harder if they, like, showed him more rather than show him once and then, like, a yeah. long movie uh, for him. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, like, to put it, like, in a different way, It's he was, like, a firework, right? It was a big bang, and then it was there for a little bit, and then it was gone. So I like yeah. that analogy a lot. Uh, yeah, like, but, like, Brian, you know. Brian, there is a, a spin-off manga of Ren Koku, so... Okay, well, I know Check what that I'm out. reading. Now. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't read it, so I don't know how much it spoils of the main series, but they... Yeah, yeah, I haven't read it either, actually. It okay, I'll wait out. until I can't, I can't the manga readers insight. have read it, and then I'll ask them if you I get should. the okay. Yep. No, um, so what was your more your most emotional scene? <laughs> David, you can go ahead. <laughs> well, okay, well, For both of you guys, I yeah. didn't cry in this movie, so but it, I did feel emotional, but um, it's okay, pro- man. We're, it's 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 fine. I Control emotion. I mean, it's probably it's probably yeah, Rango Kuz, like just his that last the last parts of his life, basically. So. Was it more of Rengoku, or was it Tanjiro? Was basically like a telling, like a basically just um, uh, calling that one dude out, basically. More like a Rengoku, especially um, especially when 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 he saw his mom, and then like and he was saying like you know how do I do, mommy? He said you made me proud. I was like that part. I was really emotional. So. Brian. Yeah. Uh, same for the most part. I know uh, in your guys' podcast, you guys were like going around and like your favorite scenes, favorite emotional scene. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can agree with like Ren Goku's like final words. 
of like farewell and stuff and like all this other stuff it was it was very hard i teared up i'm not gonna lie because i grew to like grow very attached to this character very quickly and i was like damn man why you gotta go out like this bro it hurts so bad but uh another really big like e- like just emotional emotion packed scene was when tanjiro just like went off when oh, yeah, he that, like that too. was shown like that nightmare so to say mm-hmm. oh um, yeah his family like oh why did you leave us you let us all die oh and he broke I was... Out of it. It was like not today motherfucker they would never <laughs> say that shit and i was like oh, oh my god i was thinking yeah. more of um when so, tanjiro was running away from his his peaceful dream when he was saying like i like I wish I could stay here, you know, like this That's shouldn't happen. Yeah. Like, yeah, true. I shouldn't like I shouldn't have to like learn how to fight or pick up a sword. This like this just wasn't supposed to be my life, you know? That that was more emotional for me. That's the one that got me. Whereas like that <clears throat> nightmare one is more like the more the badass of Tanjo rejecting. Yeah. Like Yeah, the like like the whole Rengoku thing like we mentioned before, like it would have got me a lot more, but I was so pissed off about like what were your guys' thoughts on uh the uh number three running away, basically getting away <laughs> alive. Yeah. Unfortunate to say, <laughs> but I, I didn't even I mean, think much about it. it. it yeah, it was, was really unfortunate, was pissed, but okay. <laughs> for me, right. it it gives me more anticipation to like look forward to like the rematch, so to say. I'm, I'm so very, Revenge. I'm very glad like he yeah. didn't like he didn't turn around when when Tanjiro was taunting him and like trying to like, trick him to like to stay in the sunlight. I think that would have been way cheap if that would happen. I'm glad he like he would yeah. just like he was he turned he, like he was pissed, but he just kept running. Like I I'm so glad his, like it wasn't a cheap death. Yeah. What was your guys' favorite badass moment? Dude, Goku, moment. Man. Oh my god. Uh, uh, Ninth <laughs> form. Ren Goku. Yeah, I was yeah, like, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> this our dude friend, has a friend, whole uh, form Hien. named after him? <laughs> yeah, our friend Hien mentioned that too. How like how so badass he named a whole form after him. So, yeah. Actually, is like, he a, it's, it's like that, or I guess like the standoff was really badass too. Like when like like he was holding holding uh holding, holding him, holding him and trying yeah. almost like chopping yeah. his neck off. Like that standoff was badass too yeah. but yeah it was big the, but like the fight, the, fight the, just... the ninth oh, was yeah, more okay, dramatic really. so i'll probably give it that yeah that was the most intense scene for me it was basically R- rengoku was holding him in place and then you didn't really know what was going to happen then then finally like that's when inosuke and tanjiro both jumped in and it's just like oh shit what the, what's going to happen uh i also appreciated too with like you know like how much like uh like how much he actually respected rengoku and he barely even knew him like he just thought like rengoku was rengoku was just badass and then even at the end, like, you know, she's just breaking down and basically just telling Tanjiro, like, no, this is what, this is basically, like, uh, like what you have to, like, how you have to remember Rengoku or whatever it was. Like, I thought, like, you know, was awesome, this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, episode movie. Yeah, his, his sort of, I think, uh, uh, someone said, like, the rallying talk that Inosuke said, um, saying pretty much, like, you know, don't cry about his death, ain't gonna mean shit. Because he's already gone. <laughs> Just pick yourself back up, get stronger, and you know, fight for another day. I was like, damn man, that hit hard. And then he's over there flailing, <laughs> running away while he's yeah. crying. I was like, damn yeah. dude, I feel it so much. <laughs> Somebody's got the man up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, they're basically soldiers in like this war, so it makes sense. Like that's the type of yeah beaching you give. And I forget how old are they too at this time? Are they like they're like 16, 16, 16 17? Teenagers, yeah, they, I think. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere around teens, yeah. Um, I, I brought this up too, um, or where I actually said like I, one of the things I wish Demon Slayer would do actually do more of, or what we would see, is uh, because like the, the the team fighting with Tanjiro and Yosuke I thought was bad, was just badass. Yep. And I thought, what were you guys, what what were you guys' thoughts like if Demon Slayer had more of like those team fight aspects I mean, into the I, show? Dude, you know me, man. Just from my hierarchy, yeah, I, talk, yeah. <laughs> I, I want those team fights. Brian. Um. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool, like the the Inosuke Tanjiro like duo to like get to the core was very yeah. well done, very dope. And like yeah, basically both, even both uh, pulling each other out of uh, out of even, uh, uh, danger. Even Nesco in the movie, like she started using more of her blood demon stuff. So I want to see more of that too. Kind of, yeah. There, there she been more all, literally the only thing she did was burn rope. And, and headbutt Tanjiro. Very true, and headbutt him. <laughs> okay, yeah. I she literally fired. She was fighting all the she... tentacles and stuff, though, too. Yeah, she, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, fire. but it's like, they show that for like five seconds, you know? And it's like, Zenitsu was there, too. Yeah. It's like... I mean, hey, yeah, but, I mean... but Ren, Ren Goku recognized. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, they were holding it down for those two no, but, I mean, Yeah, it's basically like the Tanjiro and Inosuke for that the train part, so... 
No. I don't know. Uh, uh, do, uh, any more thoughts or any more points, Brian? Uh, I'm not sure. We can't just kind of <laughs> start talking. I was just going everywhere. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that was pretty much it, man. Uh, I'm going to be saying set your heart ablaze for a long <laughs> time now. I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. So. <laughs> Yeah. Go for it's it. the um, new uh, Sasage. Yeah. I don't, like I have just a small thing, but it's like this. Like it's not something I was gonna like take off points for the movie. It's just like I guess I was saying it in a movie format. It felt kind of weird how like you had the first half focused on Tanjiro, and then it just suddenly shifts to Rengoku. So it felt like more like two special episodes instead of a movie. But I'm not gonna like, take points off that for anything. It's just it's something I noticed. But fair, yeah. I do wish this could have been more of the Rengoku show. I would have. I wish we would have got. We could have got more with them because I, I think it would have like. A, uh, I, uh, I, I think people would have had more of a connection. The with impact them. would have been a lot. Heavier, yeah, the impact would have sure. been. But, but I mean, it, it makes sense the way they did because they have to follow the manga. So that's why I'm not. I'm not gonna take off points or anything. That's just something I noticed. Like compared to like um something that was like made for a movie, but right. Um, that's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Overall, again, overall, again yeah, I'm not hard. gonna focus too much on that. But, yeah. Yeah, for something like that, it's like when you have literally like the third upper moon show up out of nowhere. Personally, I think it like his his like design, he was a very cool like character. I was like, damn, this dude just looks like gnarly. He he gives me like um uh like from Asura's Wrath, he gave me like that type oh, of vibe. Yeah. So I was like, that's damn, good, yeah. that's some intimidating dude, ass dude that just dropped out of the sky. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I mean, you just knew that, like the whole, just like the like the whole atmosphere changed when he dropped because Ringo. That was, I think, that was the first time when Ringo could quit actually smiling. Yeah, um, yeah like it was, serious, yeah. it was just yep. super intense as soon as he dropped in. Like I, I really like as much as it pisses me off that he got away for killing like this amazing character yeah. that we only knew for like this movie and one other <laughs> <Yeah>. scene. <laughs> True. Um, his character design is so cool, and I think he gave like a good demonstration of like the power ceilings so far oh, yeah, in the definitely. show. It's like, dude, Tanjiro and the gang, they got no shot against these upper <laughs> moons. Like, they got a lot of training to do, yeah, a lot of catching up yeah, to we do. They got a lot of training arcs ahead they're, of they're, well, I mean, If they step up one of them, they're getting it smacked. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, look how much Tanjiro struggled against the, the spider guy. He wasn't even, like, ranked or whatever. Oh, no, so. he wasn't. He was nowhere yeah. in there. But, but Tundra also said it best, best himself that basically he just went through that giant wall of just, uh, um, you know, mastering that um, that ability where it's like, you know, constantly, I forgot what it's called. But it's like, you know, concentration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. concentration. Yeah, concentration. Yeah, false concentration when, when he basically was going after, I don't know how long, he just got past that wall and realized that he's still so far away from like these upper level, like Hashira. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, Rengoku said it too, where he's like, you've taken the first step of, you know, for some... Like yeah. nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> I also d- definitely felt like Rengoku could have been more of like a like a um uh like kind of like, like a he sensei. could have been teaching him a lot more. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, mentor. That's also why, like, at his death, like he was because the beginning of the movie, like there he was, it was him and Tanjiro were excited, like you should you should teach under me and stuff, like we'll be student and teacher and then know, and then that, that so then the ending part yeah it was emotion because then like he was trying to say everything he could as like as like as a teacher because that's all the time he had left so yep <laughs> you okay brian <laughs> yeah <I'm fine. laughs> so, I feel uh, good yeah, so it's, I mean, overall, it was a very like, good movie. Like, I kind of want to watch it again just because the fight scenes are so badass. So. I'll watch Dude, it again. I, I only want I want to watch it in IMAX after uh, you know I heard the feedback from Sorrent and Kuhn. Okay, well the thing is, our it IMAX did theater was like, like the screen wasn't as big as it as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like the huge one, but mm. it was just like it felt standard. It was, the sound was really good though, even though it was yeah. fucking loud. Like, <laughs> oh, see, one that thing... was one thing because I oh, go ahead, Brian. Oh, I my, so. One thing that I noticed when I went to the theater, because I was in Colorado at the time, and the theater that we went to was the Alamo, like an Alamo Draft House. Ooh, you got the fancy one. How they one. did theirs was like I don't I don't know if like if it was for every theater, but theirs they had the movie rated R. 
Every what? theater. Yeah, I didn't know really every theater's oh, rated what? R, which was a kind of a controversy because it's like, why? Because it, wasn't it not rated like the same R rating in Japan and like it's other fans, countries? It's like it's rate. It's like it's like very like PG like, twelve or, or something, but, right? But yeah. it's like it's also like it's very popular for like, elementary school students. Like so, like a lot a lot of elementary school students like they say like they they're their biggest hero is Tanjiro or whatever. Like, so it's very popular. The only scene that I, yeah. I could see for why they would give that rating is this, the nightmare with uh, Tanjiro and just, like, his family just well, being kind of, like, like, really bloody and all this other thing. But everything like, else, like... Yeah. Well, general, and committing like, suicide over and over. Oh, That's yeah. pretty dark, too. Well, it's just, like, anime in general is more bloody than what we're expecting. So it's, like... so it's, That's why, like... Not, I wouldn't be surprised These if, goddamn like, Americans. If, if like if like Naruto <laughs> stuff much. rated higher because you know it's pretty pretty violent and bloody for what's supposed to be like like geared towards like, teenagers. That's true compared to the so, other yeah. animes. Yeah, yeah. it's Very been true. so long since I've had to worry about age that I just assumed it was PG thirteen. No, it's rated R. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't even think really about that know. anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so for me, going into like a theater like that where like there's there's no one like squealing when they see like a specific character that they really enjoy. Like I, I just compare it to like the My Hero movie. <laughs> when like oh, yeah, yeah, it's it just yeah. keeps popping my we head. Had, we like, had some squealers for Nezuko and Yeah, like oh, I didn't have any of that at my theater, so I was like, oh this is perfect. People are just like, here one for guy, the one role who like he, he's the only one com like saying anything, but it was pretty quiet for our theater, so Yeah. It was good. It was really nice. Yeah. And yeah, so overall I yeah, feel enjoy it. Um, hopefully the people we'll watch who watch again. Demon Slayer, especially going to season two, they don't forget to watch the movie. Hopefully, yeah, like, right. you're gonna have, you're gonna have too, a bad time if you like. Going like ho- hopefully, like there's not too much confusion. Like who's ever like not caught up. Like if let's say someone like five years from now wants to watch Demon Slayer, hopefully like they they know that they have to watch this oh, after season I didn't one. Think about that. Well, so. hopefully they have like a hopefully they have like a recap episode for season two. Um, we, where they even say like, oh, like this, and basically just kind of ca- catching them up to the, you know, the, like what's going on, and hopefully like they say in the recap about you know the movie. Hopefully. I just really hope that they make the movie more readily available for yeah. people down the line. Yeah, because yeah, if they don't, sure. it's like now you're potentially forcing somebody to either yeah. see it at an obscure theater if that theater is even showing it at that point. You know, well, it's like years potentially down or. You have to buy a DVD. I guess long story short, I want it to be put towards a crunchy roll or a fun event. Yeah, where I can see it. part of that, that is now that movie yeah. is now included. Kind of like what they did with ReZero and its OVAs and everything. I know oh, it's yeah. a lot different because this is a full length movie, but because <laughs> yeah. like because even like though. even like being um, this, you still like have to like like buy the thing or whatever. It's not on any streaming yep. stuff, so yeah, I want to avoid that and hopefully like, make it easier. It'd be easier for people to be available to watch because yeah. it's so important. I think for this, like, yeah, it is. Yeah. It would be cool if they did like put on Funimation or Crunchyroll or something. That's but, what they, I, mean, I think at some point it will. Like, the yeah. the only thing I can compare it to that I see all the time on like for YouTube example is the Dragon Ball Super movie for Broly because mm. it's like literally on YouTube. That's another. Like, that's another thing. Is it is a YouTube yeah. a YouTube premium? Oh, okay. so if they do that, oh. I feel like that's fine too. Yeah, and then yeah. They I feel like that yeah. If they do that. It needs to be a reasonably priced and available showing. Because like, telling somebody to go and buy like the Blu-ray or stuff, it's like that's when you're like, Ooh. yeah, like like, like I'm again, a, I'm, like, I'm gonna main, buy it probably. Like, <laughs> like main this oh, is yeah, canon, yeah, probably and like it. we have like the like, supposedly the next season coming out, so it's like, so whoever still needs to catch up to main this is like, we gotta get that movie available. Yep, we gotta watch it's that like, movie. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But if anything. The real reason why you should go out and do it is to support the industry and support these goddamn animators. Of course, that are making <laughs> yeah, these man. They're just Always. slaving these away. Beautiful yeah. things come come to life. Yeah. <laughs> I I actually like the idea. I don't know who brought it. It might have been Taylor or someone. But like, if they make a Patreon, Patreon dude, oh, yes. dude I'm you. throwing them so much <laughs> oh, yeah. money for those. Oh, yeah, that's what a lot of say. people from, would. from your perspective, Good, David. Yeah. I was kind of saying like. I personally feel, at least from what I've seen from Japanese culture and work culture, they kind of seem to really stray away from kind of like the the handout mentality. They do, well, they need to but, that. but they need there to move is, on from it. yeah. Um, I know, I know, Trigger has a Patreon, but that's like for like what? for um more to merchandise stuff. I don't, I, oh. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they still going on or whatever. But like, I knew, I knew they had a Patreon. Okay. Um, and then, and um, there's there's things in Japan like there's a. Uh, this this website that, that's kind of like Patreon for artists, where you can like support. Like, it's been like three or five dollars a month supporting artists. So they have like okay. they, they have things going on there, but that's it's all in Japanese, so it's very obscure for 
Yeah, well, people also need they need to do better. International yeah, but it, it's starting to change, and then some That's people good. some people have like YouTube channels, and you can like donate through that too. Like you can like yeah, there's actually uh, they brought that up not the golf like change, but there is a, a YouTuber that actually works at like I guess an animation studio, and all their YouTube videos is them like documenting like the work that they do and like the pay that they get like month over month, and it's pretty insightful. There's actually so. a couple of TikTokers that I watch too. The same thing. I've, I have I follow some that are um, manga illustrators as well as um, anime anime like an- actual animators here in the U.S. and in Japan. And it's kind of in- they're like friends with each other on TikTok too. So they'll like do collaborations while they'll comment while they're where they will comment on each other's work and pay and like the differences Very for them. Cool. It's actually really interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely like the older people like don't um. They don't like like more of the those handouts, but I think like like younger crowd, they definitely know like it, it's not sustainable. So they're more open that kind of stuff. So yeah, good times have changed. And yeah. also the yeah. thing is like Ufoto Ufoto is owned by Anaplex, which is owned by Sony. So it's that stuff. It's it's like Ufoto CoverWorks. It's like you're you're a big corporate company. It's like you, you gotta do better in this, you know. So yeah. Um. They got to keep their hands out of the, the cookie jar, as we were saying with Ufotable and their recent uh, extortion <laughs> oh, right, pass right. that they had. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. But yeah, to back Brian's point, though, I mean, if, if there were like those uh, Patreons going on, I'm sure a lot of people would actually donate. Or I mean, donate, but subscribe or whatever Patreon or does. Tax evasion, not extortion, wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool of extortion. You want that good shit? You got to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> but only pay me the big guy. <laughs> Turn, turns out Ifoto was the one behind Tokyo Manji King all along. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, all right. Brian, I'm gonna wrap you it have up uh, any more points? Oh, okay. Uh, but, Never mind. I didn't have anything else. I was going to wrap it up here. Brian, did you have anything yeah. else? It's pretty much it, man. Set your heart ablaze, everyone. Yes. Every day. <laughs> I Wake up in the morning, look into the mirror, <laughs> and set it ablaze. Oh, yeah. Every day is a new day. <laughs> Yeah, and it will be successful <laughs> no matter what happens. Oh. Keep, keep keeping it a buck. I'm gonna day, change every day. I, I I just uploaded like the previous Demon Slayer video we have, but I'm gonna put that in the title now. Thank you, Brian. Okay, set your heart ablaze. There we Anytime. go. We're right in it here. So thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, we had so yeah, we do have the Demon Slayer video up too, and also the AOT yes. probably the AOT one up by the time this comes up too. So check those out. Thank you guys. Y'all are yep. crazy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Trailer. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Play that outro music. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, that was a lot of fun, guys. (laughs) Okay.